Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is David. Hello, I am Windrunner on the forums, and I'm here to talk about Threnody. I said it the time. Threnody. This is the second episode we're recording right after another, so this one's going to be yeah. even more unhinged than the last the, uh, one. Yeah. Oh, Only been four hours. Here we go. Yep. The three noties. Yes. <laughs> three noties. No, that was in Rhythm of War. The three notes. <laughs> yeah. I had to like, stop myself from laughing until I finished freaking <laughs> Oh, okay. So it wasn't just you like trying to figure that out. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> next up we have Evgeny. How's it going? Hi. My uh, name is Jeffrey Jeffrey. Great. Also joining us is Grace. Hey, I'm Gator Girl. And last but not least, we have Ala. Hello. Hello. I'm Rosar. I'm still in there. CPR space because but, of camera settings. But you took off the bats. Yeah, well, I mean, it's no longer. Uh, it's gonna be like two weeks, three weeks after. Yeah, it's the end of November. Halloween. <laughs> Get some turkeys. Yes. Oh yeah, that's. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I am chaos. Uh, whoo boy, listeners, if you're watching this, me and Eric got it <laughs> faced at Dragon Steel. <laughs> I mean, it, the con hasn't started when this episode airs. <laughs> we 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 did like the, don't don't like j- don't think about time too much. In the much. spiritual just, realm, yeah, like like well, might be, sure. we might be recording this <laughs> before the con, <laughs> but you I, are I watching this you after the con. Between, in the ten minutes between episodes, we all did like five shots. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is not true, but. Yeah, Wait, I mean, not, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not true for you. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I will go downstairs and get alcohol if you think that's necessary. Oh, this is this is turning should, should into shortcast after dark. <laughs> I mean, think? I don't think it's necessary, but like, I mean, you do you, David. You have a good ju- sense of judgment. Should not, I go down and oh, get a I'll shot get, of rum? I'll go get something to drink. All right, let's <laughs> do that. Okay, be right back. <laughs> I, I don't have alcohol in my apartment right now, unfortunately. I, I don't drink so. <laughs> A few moments later. Okay, so after that quick break where we where we got we got some booze, uh, we're back, <laughs> and we're Here's... here to talk to you about. Uh, I just did a shot of tequila personally. <laughs> now so we are here to talk to you about your extended Dawn Shard warranty. Right. <laughs> Is one of your Dawn Shards different than all the rest? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need it if repaired or fit into a topaz potentially? If your torment lasts for four hours or more, please Talk consult. To that's, that's, that's what the night brigade really is. They're just like really determined to like get uh get money out of out of Six Zelda. Yeah, they're 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 just like really advanced muggers. A, a collection agency. It's a collection agency. Yeah. He owes a lot of debt. Yeah, yeah. Can only be paid in Dawn Shards. Um, we're talking about Sunlit Man lore this episode, and I don't know how much of this intro is staying in the actual episode. Maybe all of it? I don't yeah. know. We'll find just out. skip it all. Have fun. Nah. Even, even the break when we all leave the call. Just keep that in. <laughs> no. Uh, so, <laughs> spoiler policy. It's full Cosmere spoilers. All through Sunlit Man. Uh, no Stormlight 5 uh, previews. Uh, we didn't actually talk about Six of the Dusk 2 in the last episode. Maybe we will this one a little bit, but there's not much in there, really. So, cool. So where do we want to start, guys? So, what did we talk about last time? We talked about Sun Hearts and Cinder Hearts. Yes. We talked a lot about, like the dawn shards yes and about um, sixel's powers and of. sixel's powers and and we touched on hoid a little bit and like how he relates yeah. to like those same things um i yeah. guess there's a lot of like local planetary slash systematic stuff the, the planet is so weird here so maybe we should talk about the planet uh, yeah Canticle, sure let's talk about right? the planet because we we alluded to the weird 
circuit <laughs> the resistance causing the sun hearts let's talk about that because sigzel first thinks that it's the light burning things up but it's actually not mm-hmm. the light burning things up because when they go to s- space it's fine right yeah mm-hmm. light has a little bit of a messenger but it's not like the main cause of the destructive force we see or or maybe it's a lot but it's kind of diffused and so it's not like it's not dangerous on its own it, sure 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 but like so i guess from that perspective it could be like the taldane sun providing some mm-hmm. light but that's not mm-hmm. like it's not doing all of that power yeah. uh melting mm-hmm. and changing the geology of the planet, which I suppose we could talk about, David, about how bonkers that is. Uh, but, um, but so then the investiture from the sun makes like a circuit with the heavily invested core of the planet. Right. Yeah. Is, am yeah, I getting so that it's right? A, it's a tiny ass planet. Yes. It's like the size of an, of an asteroid, essentially. Because uh, yeah, you can like, you you can go around it in like twenty hours. Twenty two, yeah. Like I think someone had calculated the someone on the sh- on the seventeen shot had calculated the surface area of this planet, and it was like less than the United States. Yeah, okay. it's like the, the circumference is like a few hundred miles, I think, okay. which is insane. Sure. Uh, but it's it's a it's a super invested core. It's not necessarily a super dense core. Like there's some magic stuff going on there. This is not pure physical mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be insane. Necessarily. Um and then whenever the sunlight hits the surface, um it's getting like aggressively pulled into the core. And that is causing some violent reaction of some kind. Um, it's it's. I, I think things get a little weird when you start getting close to the poles, and it's because it's like you know the surface of the planet, or, or the planet itself, and then like the core is presumably like a tiny nugget inside, and so. Only a fraction of the sun facing half of the planet is going to be directly between the sun and the core, right? I just think it all gets melted. You know, I think the core is probably not that much smaller than the planet, the inside of the planet, because it's all so small anyway. So just basically the whole surface sort of gets melted. Yeah, like it doesn't, there's a much smaller core. I think the whole surface does get melted. I think there is a little bit more to the whole, oh, it's the core that is pulling. Like, I, I think there's a missing piece of the explanation here. I don't think the size of the core is like relevant so that like only the poles get it or like, I don't think that's like a thing. Or maybe I'm just not following what you're saying. Yeah. <sighs> so here's the thing. Okay. When Nomad, like when, when they're cresting over the hill, the, yep. the mountain, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is like a, a thousand feet or whatever. Yeah. Nomad is on a mountain that is like jutting out of, of the surface of the planet. And he's on top of that. Mm-hmm. And he's safe on top of a ship that is on top of of that. So he is far enough from like the sun to core circuit to be safe at that point. Okay, sure, sure. All right. Later on, right? So they've, they've crested that mountain and they're on the other side and then nomad goes and does his mission in the maelstrom and comes back with a bunch of sun hearts when they are leaving the area and and then like later on he has to expend a lot of investiture to make ox very big and like shield the people in the last ship Mm -hmm. he sees the mountaintop that they had crested earlier safely 
in the sunlight, he sees that get melted. Yeah. I mean, like, I think this is just heat passing from the lower parts of the mountain into the upper. I, I just like, don't understand what, like, what, what a point are we making here, though? Yeah, just well, like, I guess. I, I seem fine. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't seem really strange to me. It's like, I just don't think that, yeah, there are some prominences that extend high enough into space that they see sunlight earlier, and that's not direct enough to melt them until later. That seems pretty straightforward to me. Like, you need enough of the light to make the circuit, I guess. Yeah. So whether this so what, what, is actually a circuit is like, because there's nothing's going back to the sun, but you know, whatever, you know, it's magic. Yeah. Like arguably, I guess the top of the mountain probably should have started melting first. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> He's just, we, we killed him. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking of like, cause I, I, I know I've had issues with this. Um, like I, I, I know I've made arguments that oh, it's not like it, it can't be just the direct line between the star and the core. It has to like be essentially like a field that is around the core that is like pulling. Um, sure, investiture field. Let's put an identity field on that too. Sure, yeah, let's get it in there. Yeah. I mean, I do agree that like it feels more like a field than a circuit. Hmm. I guess I don't know enough to know the difference about that. Uh, I think that like the main thing to me that he seems that it seems to be is that there is some sort of gradient where it's being drawn from the star to the core of the planet, which is kind of interesting. Like, where does that power go? It doesn't seem. Yeah, like I was just thinking that. It's yeah. Changing or anything. Uh. You know, in particular, that we could see at least over the course of a couple of days, maybe there's long term changes. Yeah. Like, is that invest? Is the core just getting more and more invested over time with this process? Like, that that seems to be the implication if it's being drawn. Well, they eventually, in there. just like their arms and legs will break <laughs> as the mass just becomes too great for anybody to survive on the planet. Yeah. It, it's stable for a few thousand years and then it's not, and then it doesn't work anymore. Well, just un, as, un, unless there's some kind of like a venting process on the other end, right? I guess that could be true. Yeah. They could be, it could be also expelling investors somewhere else in a natural way. Uh, Maybe it's like a wormhole kind of deal. Yeah, or like, like you know, black hole, oh black hole and hawking radiation or whatever. Things that I don't actually I mean, know anything about. Because, like, you know, that's like theory. Like, there's like black holes and white and white holes. And yeah, there's and a theory holes. that they're like connected. Maybe it's this kind of deal. Yeah. Which actually, step. like, do you suppose? Because if we assume what you were saying earlier, that like the core becomes more, gains more gravity over time. Do you suppose it would eventually like collapse on itself into a black hole? Or does it not work that way because of the true? I don't think it's oh, mass. I just you know? I, I just don't yeah. think it's gaining more gravity over time. Yeah, I don't think that's actually I, I was one of those to... weird like like Taldane, and this is a weird thing that Aid Nauseam sent it set up to be <laughs> like a stable loop somehow. Well, uh, yeah. I mean there there's a very reasonable argument that you can make that it's not that the core is absorbing more light it's that it's forming a circuit right and so you have this investiture that is traveling from the star to the core and back to the star in some way and so it's not that the core is gaining it's that it's very highly invested which is enough to provide like a, a gravitational field that is disproportionate to the physical mass of the planet but it's not necessarily increasing. And I guess I just mm -hmm. never got the sense the planet is returning anything. Like yeah, that's the like thing. a circuit implies an ex like there and back again. You know, goes to the spiritual realm and back to a star. Like you can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it was okay. Well, that's not a, that's a, that's not much of a circuit then, is it? Everything's a circuit. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything's a circuit in the, circuit. the spiritual realm, David. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Okay, like sure. Wasn't there a thing in like the lost metal that? like a lot of investiture in one place is what creates perpendicularity yep yep maybe like okay this oh, is okay, okay what is the sure inside, what if the planetary core is like a perpendicularity uh just one no, that happens to be a... there's no perpendicularity in here uh that comes up when nomad meets 
the Scadrians? Maybe no perpendicularity on the planet, but what about in the planet? Arjun? If you are in Shadesmar, I don't know if you can make that <laughs> distinction. You can appear in the core. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, if there's a perpendicularity that is expelling investiture into Shadesmar, is that a perpendicularity or is that just a perpendicularity that you can't use? And so it's not practically That's, speaking. I, I, I have, I have a th- if the maelstrom is the other part of the circuit and expect and like expels an investiture, would anyone even like know? Like, uh, so the maelstrom? the maelstrom is explicitly an area where heat gets dropped. Like, so when when uh, Nomad goes into the maelstrom and is like he's burning alive and is like I need to to uh, go to safety and digs a hole in the ground and when he's in this like essentially like in a grave, it's what's happening. He feels heat being leached from around him and him and in him or from him into the core of the planet so like that's where that uh uh like drawing of heat is happening another heat drawing parallel yes and and it's also likely that a lot of the investiture in this investiture circuit is just directly converted into energy on the planet to vaporize Mm. the planet right like the the core doesn't necessarily need to be like maybe it's gaining a bit of investiture but it's not like an appreciable amount uh compared with just that investiture being converted to energy somehow in this and completely reforming the entire planet all the time like Dis- maybe dissipated as heat essentially yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah like that that's so probably fine. That's, that's fine. all i have to say no i i i do agree with you it's weird for sure yeah like yeah and the thing that i come back to is that this is so weird what created this system like this is just so bizarre well, yeah and that's the, that, and like is it for a purpose you're like, what are we like, doing here? Yeah, because like Taldane, you can see somebody being like, I'm going to make a weird world, you know, and it's going to be kind of fun. But like this, it's just like a mud ball that like exists to make an investor circuit with some, <laughs> with some fun deer on it. Yeah. Maybe this was like like a Donazium's investiture battery for a rainy day. It's a, I mean, the Cosmere <laughs> is a Donazium sandbox. It's like, hey, what if, what, what about this cool here? idea? What was he like envisioning? What was the point of this one? Maybe you like know? he could like use this to iterate on his ideas for like mountain ranges and valleys. Because if it's all remained every day, he can just like test out different configurations. Yeah, like if for for a place that's you know creating stuff and there's like an intelligent design, I'm not really understanding what the design is. <laughs> I gotta, gotta be honest, if it's an Alcium, I is don't... It, his whimsy side is showing. <laughs> yeah, I don't, sure. like, I, don't, I don't think it's a design. That's the thing. I think it's a sandbox. It's like, hey, what would happen if I put a super invested star and a planet that's like the size of, a, of an asteroid that pull... Like, it's a playground. But, like, wouldn't Aiden Nalcium, the being, have such an expanded mental capacity that Aiden Alcium probably would know how that works? Maybe, Maybe he, he just wanted, wanted to, to learn. I just, I just, it's, it's baffling to me that this was like, this, this is what I'm going for here. Like, I, I don't. But I mean, why are there 10 gas giants on Roshar? It's like, yeah, you know, I, thought, I like 10 of them for sure, man. I think the real answer is Brandon's going to do what Brandon's going to do. Yes. And we know Bra- that's true. And Brandon <laughs> and, and Brandon needs Aiden Alcium to be, okay, let's create a bunch of species that can interbreed except those bugs. But I want to make no. those too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, let's let's make sure they all have good old titties. <laughs> do we actually do we know if females Shodel do have breasts? Uh we don't. I expect that they do. <laughs> I mean, I was talking about the sleepless. Well, you were, yes. I was yes. talking about the singers. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. Um Yeah, I 
uh, like, yeah, Aiden Elsium is just the mechanism for to get Brandon to write cool stories. Like, I get that for mm-hmm. sure, but I don't know. I I don't. I am curious, like, what the mindset is. Like, I'm sure these worlds exist for a reason, and it's just like, is it that Aiden Elsium was just playing with stuff? Did he have specific, like, some of the stuff from Frost is very much like. They believe Aiden Elysium set everything up in the entire universe with a purpose, you know, which is well, kind of even cool. yeah, and belief, even like but... the people on Canticle believe that, yeah, right, like, which is interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. they also believe that he will remember their plight eventually, and I mean, but that's... they all they're like when he when he like calls them on it, they're like, yeah, we know he's dead, like, like well, actually. It- Speaking of intents, what was the original Zellion thinking bringing people there? Oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, it kills the shades. Well, yeah, let's so. so oh my God. But let's, other, let's talk for a minute sides. about what is presented in world. Right? Okay. So the book tells us, or, or the, the Threnodites, the Beaconites tell us that um, there was. So they ran away from their homeland uh, and they arrived in hell and there was strife between them. And Zellion was like, let's peace out. The real, the real enemy is not the shades. It's not the evil. It is this strife between us. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense because, like, the shades weren't a thing for them until they went to the forest of hell. So that would have to, like, they would have gotten there for that to have, like, been a thing that they were, you know, bringing with them, I feel like, you know? Are, are we sure they weren't a thing before? Because, like... Sh- the shades were discovered in the forest of hell. That's why they were called the forest of hell, because the death, because the shades okay. reside there. That's my recollection, at least. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, it was like, I remember that Na- Naz had, like, rituals and stuff connected to Shades, which doesn't we have, seem We don't have be... any idea what that means, yeah, devoid that's... of context. What, uh, what, what is Naz even talking about in that line about rituals and rites to become a cognitive shadow? I don't know what that means. I mean, it's a, it's a good open question, like, for sure. Like... What I'm talking about is, like, not necessarily that they didn't do cognitive shadowy stuff on the homeland, but, like, they went to... They found that they found the new continent that was the force of hell, and that continent had shades, and that's where they that okay. began for them. Okay, so that yeah. makes sense that they would have left there with Zellion after having like arrived on that place. It does suck for sure. Yeah, and the way this is presented in text is Zellion's like, no, the real problem is we are we we keep fighting, or you keep fighting with each other. Let's go to a place where, and this is implied, but let's go to a place where you have to constantly like work and fight for your survival so you don't have to time, you don't have the time to fight with each other. Zellion, the original Zellion, comes across as just kind of an asshole. To yeah, be I was like, this, this yeah. guy is crazy. <laughs> Well, that, that is kind of like, it almost feels like the Puritan, like, pe- kind of pilgrim-esque, like, work thing, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, honestly, yeah, it really does <laughs> seem like that. It's like, you know, if you just work hard enough, then there will be no strife, and I have the perfect place for this. If it's you like, are if you are too tired to think, you won't have any of the problems that come with thinking. <laughs> and, and I guess part of this is, oh, in this new place, shades are not going to be a problem. Yeah. But, but but they, right. the, the chorus says they will be, though. <laughs> yeah. No, but the chorus is created so that they aren't, essentially, in my mind. You know, like well, whatever, right. that, however that happened. I mean, they like the chorus does say, oh, a uh, leave people out in the sun. Yeah. Or like feed the sun or whatever it is that they say. So like this planet is a solution to the shades problem. Mm-hmm. So but it also you... talks about how shades do still form sometimes, but they end up going to the chorus when that happens. Yeah. Well, I, I think that happens when like they either die or kill each other outside of the sun. Well, yeah. there's, there's still an interesting like mechanical development. You know what I mean? Like that's not how shades behave on Threnody, that yeah. they go to this prearranged space where yeah. they're contained. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's, a, that's a separate thing. Yes. Yeah. 
And it's like, in general, it feels like the people of Beacon seem to have access to like more advanced tech than the people of Frenody. Oh, yeah. And like they had this. Like when things take place. If you call the Night Brigade the people of Serenity, they seem to have even more advanced I mean, technology. But like in a sense of this this whole plan of running around the planet only works if they have the technology to keep running ahead of the sun. True. Yeah. So like they, they could not come to Canticle in I don't know, horse drawn carriages. Yes. Like no, they had and, to yeah. they had to already have their little like hover ships. Yes, and there is a line about that from chapter twenty two when they're talking to the chorus. And it says, we were the first who died on Canticle, a shade whispered him, the first to live in this land and devise the designs of flight based on the ships that brought us here. But then we died in Rose's shades, remembering. So we all, we all think Zillion is not a friend of day, right? Like, no, he's, well, he's an outsider. I mean, he's got opinion. a Yolish name. He's got to be Yolish. Yeah. Or and I, and I don't think he's Hoyd. I'm going to throw that out there. I no, don't think Zillion no, is no, fine. So people seem to believe that to be the case. What if it is Kelsier using a nope. Yolish name? Absolutely. It's, it sounds like a cult. <laughs> Gotta be Kelsier, right? Oh, like, this whole philosophy. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the Skaterians are there. Kelsier is like, okay, check on these guys. I dropped them off 500 years ago. Let's see what happened. <laughs> I helped them. I was very helpful. Their, <laughs> their society is going just fine. Uh, yeah. I cut to cut to Canticle where the discount ro- Lord Ruler is running about. <laughs> Thanks well, to yeah, Skadrians. The the, the yeah. Cinder King being a budget budget rational is, is funny. Yeah. Yes. I Yeah. Uh, honestly, I completely missed this line in our Sunlit Man re- reactions episode, and you were like, no, there's spaceships, though. Like, Zellian had the spaceships, and I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? And so, yeah, there yeah. it is. It's right there. Well, the ancient aliens guy. It was the spaceships that brought them it, there. It literally was. <laughs> it was. Okay, yeah. yeah, and I mean, like, the chorus are probably the most trustworthy, like, like they accurately probably say these things, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I and believe that this is an accurate statement. Yeah, and it's interesting, okay, too, like, because they wouldn't have had the uh, Sun Hearts as fuel either, because that's mm, from this planet, presumably. No, so whatever they, like the ships that carried them there presumably had something else powering yeah. them. Yeah. And also there's the fact that, like, space sh- like Zellion, by the way, Zellion is talking spaceships still aren't, like... Sorry, which Zellion? Zellion? Come on. The, the new Zellion, sorry, Nomad. <laughs> Zellion the way Nomad is talking, I got the impression that spaceships aren't yet like the universal mean of travel, like people still go through yes. straight Mars. So the mm. fact that uh, Zellion, the original Zellion, had the uh, had the spaceship tech back in the days of like, I don't know, Shadows for Silence is also weird. And they're yeah. going far. It's not like they're hopping to like the next planet. This is like a whole yeah. other system. Like, yeah. Is this? Do we think this is a thing where the ships like went through Shadesmar and then popped out here? Like, it's just uh, so baffling to me them having ships to do space flight to get over here like a while ago. I guess they could be rocket ships that flew through Shade Smart. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. they still have yeah. they still have the repulsive to like, you know, what I mean? Like they still burn fuel to travel. Yeah, so like they're yeah. teleporting. I, I think they're I think they're ships. Like I think the original ships, the ones that they used to get from from Therenity to here, were more akin to like like jet airplanes. So, so like not suited for FTL. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, but, yeah. but not, but not like wheeled vehicles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. Sure. And so I do think they went through shades more because mm-hmm. okay. the, like the, the distance in, in like physical space was probably too much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I don't think they've had that's FTL for that long. Like that's so, insane to me. Yeah. And so I think it was like faster than like carriages and caravans, but slower, much slower than FTL. I would personally not rule out FTL. I just wouldn't put it out of the question. I yeah. think it's possible they went through Shade Smart, but like we know that 
we have had people teleporting people between planets for a very long time in the Cosmere. Yeah, so but it's possible why, why spaceship? Somebody has cl- in, infraplanet spaceships that can do it. Why do they have it in Star Wars if they can just do FTL? Because that's how you do it. <laughs> But yeah, the Star Wars slow, ships the slow space travel up close, then you go FTL. That's how they're done. Yeah, like the one one problem I have with like travel through Shadesmar is that that would require Zellion, the original Zellion, to have some means of creating a perpe- temporary perpendicularity on on site, since I mean, we know the planet doesn't have native ones. That's possible, though. <laughs> yeah, that feels easier than some of these other. Honestly, that feels less difficult than like creating FTL way earlier yeah, than honestly, everyone else. And that, that does <laughs> seem more likely, to be honest. Here, here's here's the other thing I want to challenge: the ships that they use currently are adapted from their original ships, except now they use Sun Hearts instead of whatever like yep. sure propellant to or, fly the atmosphere. So not only were they meant to fly atmosphere, but like these hover bikes that they're riding around, these didn't used to be FTL hover bikes. They were always hover bikes, just with a different power source. Sure. They could yeah. Have, well, yeah, but they've been rebuilt. So it's possible they were based on FTL hover bikes. They just didn't know how to build the uh, FTL, I, FTL I, hover I, bike. I think I like the... How cool, how cool would like that be? No, you do bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> so... Okay. I feel like I'm with the flying through. Sh- like I feel like I can, even I can see it. Probably makes out, like, sense empirically. These were but, never spaceships. That and unfortunately, like, there is air in shades more. We know. <laughs> yeah, I. As I feel like, but like even in text, like they call it like Nomad says, like flying through shades more is a thing people do, yeah. right? Like and and space travel has only been really experimented in the past century or so. Something well, like even that. Vasher uh, was carried to Rashar on a vehicle of some sort. Well, you know, he, maybe he was a cart. Maybe he was in a little spaceship. He said a hover did. bike. Zellian Azure. was like, was like, get on my bike, Vasher. We got yeah. places to be. Back. I'm coming back from Canticle. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and Zellian is the original Zellian's Vin Diesel, Argent. And then okay. that's the Fast and Furious <laughs> movie. The original. Leaving out, <laughs> leaving out the how of bringing them there. Okay, the great. why does remain. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why, true. Yes. Why do this to people? Yes. He does sound like an asshole. I, I'll be honest. <laughs> like you, yeah. you don't intentionally bring someone to this planet. So th- this whole plan means this Zellian has these hover bikes and things at least and knew of Canticle and at least had the technology to make this society initially function somehow pre-chorus, right? I assume because, like currently with the establishment of the chorus. I, I guess, but no, you're right. You're right. They must have had an initial thing because it they needed to die for the chorus to exist. Yeah, because like, chorus, Ze- how would Zellian were... know about I mean, that? Maybe yeah. they just brought a bunch of elderly people like for the sake of creating the chorus. That seems like we need some sacrificial lambs. Come along. I, I guess I'm just like, how we much... We were the first to die on this planet because Zellian killed us to make the chorus. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I I think they all arrived and like they made do like so they, they come in with whatever yeah like, uh technology they are let's say they they all drove like trucks through shades more sure to get here cool maybe they were normal trucks maybe they were hover trucks hover trucks but, like cool. they get here they were definitely hover trucks we know it it was based on the same technology well but based on but like what what is based on me anyway so they they arrive here <laughs> in trucks but they don't have the like essentially infinite power source that is the sun hearts yeah it, it's not infinite so, it's super efficient so but whatever. He, he had some other power source maybe it was just like diesel or whatever right but like no, no, it no, was no, enough no, no, to no, like no, no. for them to survive Wait, a little bit no like they didn't immediate like they didn't immediately upon arrival to Cantico go Oh, we gotta sacrifice some people for fuel. Okay. Well, here let's say let's say this. How about they just arrive? Basically, what Zellian does is he gives them a fleet of hover bikes powered by other means and brings them to Canticle, opens a perp, they come in, and he says, "All right, there you go." And they exist on those bikes for a period of time, 
as the bikes break down and time passes, people die. Of yes. course, it's established. They begin learning more about sun hearts and establish new vehicles based on similar designs, but powered by the dawn hearts. And that, I think that's, that's, that's how, how it has get. to be. Or I the think. sun hearts. Yes. Actually. That is essentially what I was going there for. And then dipped yeah. right yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, like, maybe he was like, you guys asked for this, but, like, other than that. I mean, that. maybe maybe he, like, stayed with them and died with them or whatever. I don't think that's important. I guess. Important. I don't know. It's possible. They didn't mention that. Uh, All right. The, uh, only, the only, like, correction I will propose is that the primary modification to their designs was they didn't, like, re-engineer their entire bikes. They re-engineered just the engines. To use Sun Heart instead of whatever it is. Well, just, yeah, just the before. fuel. Like yeah. they didn't have. To, well, yeah. they seemed to like rebuild them with the chorus. I assume, you know. Yeah. But. And and I will say it definitely cannot be diesel because, as Sigzel said, it's like that's ridiculous to yeah. have a floating thing yeah. with like yeah. conventional it was some other energy. Magical so fuel. like it was. It has yeah. to be some other magical fuel. It, it, sure, right. it was some kind of investor. Sure. Question. Dragon Zellion, yay or nay? Quick, quick <laughs> okay. Oh, I okay. Would say, I'll give it a possible. Yeah, that's possible. possible. That's, that's so definitely possible. possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. No. Like we know, we know dragons. You know, like to have people that, that follow them. You know. <sighs> and it sounds fancy enough that you could actually, name. It could actually be like Zellion Nominal Banan. You know, it would be like, oh, Ooh. it's got a, it's got a twelve character version as well. Sure, sure. He, he, but it's in his. It's he who brings the fire at dawn. You know. Yeah. If he were a dragon, he would not have abandoned these people. He would have like cultivated them. Maybe he already is. Maybe I don't know. Maybe he's Dragons the core of the planet. <laughs> All right, y'all can do whatever weird stuff you want to do. I I think that's too crackpot. <laughs> no, no, no. The core of the planet what? is dragon steel. Sure. I mean that, that's maybe, he, that's maybe he's the Cinder King and he was just supremely confident and then suddenly he was like, whoa, wait a minute, and then Okay. <laughs> nah, that guy's a poser. No, but okay, but I know this is gonna sound very cracky, but it is less cracky than those other things. And so I think it's, it's in not the a difficult thing to do. I I'm just saying if he's a dragon and he had a dragon palace in Silverlight, maybe he like created motorbikes to go around Jade Smart and he deployed them from Silverlight or something, okay? Like that that's pos that's possible. He might have a bunch of researchers in Silverlight and they're like, yo, let's let's make some vehicles that can move through Shadesmar and the, the ground is weird there, so we need like better things to do that. And they have to float to do that. They can't be like regular ships and stuff. That kind of mm -hmm. they're already weird. basically flying hover ships anyway with the Madras. The ships just levitate once they hitch up to them, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. like I, I think there's a root of dragon zellion or dra zellion could be a human serving a dragon at silverlight and he got the technology from silverlight because the thing that confuses me is a power source and b where did he get the tech because if he's yolish how technologically advanced is yolan presently open question who knows it's one of the first worlds why you know? should it not be one of the most technologically advanced? Sure. You so know what? Another candidate for like... Everyone's not dead. <laughs> you know, another candidate for like advanced tech world is uh, Taldane. Yeah. Because like we... It's true. They already had gunpowder <laughs> like thousands of years before. Yeah, but Zellian is a Yolish name. I mean, nobody, pr nobody can stop... Him. Okay, I, I guess autonomy can stop him from going to Taldane, but like... <laughs> So, so you think a Yolish dude <laughs> went to Taldane, which was which had hover bikes, stole either the technology or a fleet of hover bikes, <laughs> went to Threnody with his fleet of hover bikes, picked up a bunch of people, and went to the deadly sun planet. Okay. Okay. To be fair, that is already a long string of implausible things. So, <laughs> and like, it's not really like mo most of those things happen regardless of Taltane. Let, let's be honest. Yeah. You could do one more. You could say it just as incredulously <laughs> here. I'm just saying. Yes, look. It's not, like, it does not get any weirder. Sigzel <laughs> is a Rosharan man with a Yolish name. Like, I don't know, the yeah. fact that he has a Yolish name 
does not necessarily mean that he is Yolish. He yes. could be some I, Yolish immortal who I mean, lived on Talbain for a while. Like the, the one it's, thing it's we the, know about him and it the, puts it's, it out the window, and so now we know nothing about him. But it, if you think about it, what are the two worlds with the most invested sons, Taldane and Canticle? Both the time that we've seen. That we've seen. More. That we've seen. And maybe this Zellion is like, you know, this light, not good enough for me. I need I need to find a place that has Brighter even better light. sunlight. <laughs> Zellion is like one of those uh, fundamentalist Taldanis who like worship the sun and is like, no, no, this sun isn't good enough. I need a stronger <laughs> sun to work. This I one doesn't a- kill me. <laughs> on my hover bike excursions guys i found a better place and like none of the people there wanted to go and so he went to threnody found those suckers oh and also in this this zellian can also make perpendicularities okay so that's why he doesn't need autonomy's yeah. consent because he can make his own perpendicularities it's fine it all makes sense listen what if the what if the zellion the original zellion is emperor skaven from Star Trek? all right oh all right <laughs> What if, what if, what if we went back to something resembling being on topic? Okay, okay. Uh, but, but to be fair, Taldane is a candidate for the technology, right? Like, that is a yeah. true statement. Yeah, I, I will concede. A lot of yes. places. I, Look, hover bikes useful on top of sand. Yeah. To me, it's a little unclear how long these people have been here. Yeah, it absolutely. Seems like they didn't yeah. leave too long after they fled the evil but it also seems like this is far future yeah uh, so yeah. my thought was maybe they were they got put into cryo sleep and they well, took a solution uh, oh okay let's, uh, so that's my timeline is an interesting question because yes it is future i like the way nomad talks like i he talks always in this in terms of decades and not centuries yes true which is, which like I think this could though. be like like 150 years post like current stormlight timeline, sure. right? Sure. And that would be re- like reasonable to me. I yeah, that, that is reasonable. Yeah, unfortunately. So it maybe like they've been there for 200 it. years, right? Like maybe they've lived on Canticle 200 years. I suppose, but I just feel like Threnody, like Shadows for Silence. I don't think we have a great sense of where it falls in the timeline. No, but I feel like it falls no. earlier. Well, it has to be before, right? So this is post Ambition's death. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that happens before Odium gets involved with the Rosharan system. Yes. Yeah, but we don't know how long after Ambition's death the evil thing happens. And that's the main question mark. That doesn't have to be immediate. Yeah, I feel like, okay, if, if, if that's like... That feels like way too far back for like if, yeah. if this happened right when Ambition died. That feels way too. Far I mean, back. that always seemed kind of far back, but it's it's unclear. But also, we need enough time for the Night Brigade to have their badass spaceships, right? Like that. Yeah. That's also a thing that needs to happen, and they probably have some of the most advanced space tech. Yeah, presumably. Yeah, in and the cosmos. Yeah, and I assume in Shadows for Silence, they are in an actual ship, like a sailing ship, not a spaceship yet. So it's yeah, gonna be, yeah, you know, yeah. 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 And like, there has to be enough development in like space travel and space colonization for it to make sense that there is a private military corporation that's traveling from planet to planet. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. I, you can't I be think... a mercenary if there's no customers yet. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like flying around. I, th- yeah. I think there is a version of this where you can make an argument of maybe the Night Brigade come, they are Threnodites, we know that, yes. but maybe as a mercenary company, they, like, maybe they were Threnodites originally and they, like, left Threnody in the same way that there is a Maoish population in Silverlight. Sure. Maybe they've left Threnody. Like, Threnody is still, you know, not a backwater, but it's, you know, not space travel ready sure but the night brigade has gone elsewhere where there are spaceships yeah yeah and so they're so it's possible i think that there is like a world or a couple of worlds in the cosmere that are ahead 
of everyone else when it comes to space travel. Mm-hmm. And the majority of the Cosmere, Skadrio, Roshar, what have you, are just catching up in the last century or so. But the Night Brigade and wherever they are coming from have been flying in spaceships for a bit, several centuries. I guess it's possible. I feel like whoever they bought those spaceships from should be even more in charge of what's happening because yeah. they've been in spaceships for longer than everybody. But yeah, that's the know, tricky maybe, thing. Maybe the Night Brigade have a lot of power because of their ghost sight. Maybe they destroyed the planet that those spaceships came from. Or maybe those people are otherwise locked in their yeah. world or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they, they did say, like, they've dis- like the Night Brigade has destroyed planets, right? Do we... I kind of... I still kind of wonder if one of those is the Sleepless Home World. One of those Dude. destroyed planets? Yeah. Dude, that'd be awesome. And that's why they're, like, so afraid of the Dawn Shards and are, like, so, like, all about protecting the Dawn Shards because they know exactly how okay. bad it can be. Wouldn't that mean that the Night Brigade is already, like, active out in outer space before? They could be going through Storm perpendicularities Star? before then, though. Yeah, they could, yeah. Be a, they could be a mercenary troop that just operated on foot for a while, you know? God, that's terrifying to imagine. It's like, oh, it's just another caravan going through Shades Mart. It's just this giant army of Shades. It's like, well, okay, I'm I'm dead. I'm out of here. So I guess since we've, we're on this topic now, do we just want to dive into the Night Brigade? I mean, I think that's right where we are yeah. right currently. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't yep. think we're going to figure out the spaceships or OG's alien. Damn. Any I, I think the, the right one now, other thing that I'd say, though, is just... There are clearly some more technologically advanced places that mm-hmm. have existed. And I think it's possible that um, I literally, this is a typo in the book search. There's Sigzil with an E. Anyway, sorry. No, uh, that's uh, that's one of the uh, thread. Like Sigzil says his name and the other person like, mispronounces it or like says it with an accent oh okay uh but like it's possible that like say invention is helping wherever Mm -hmm. it is with some sort of technology or like it gives technology uh to people i I don't know but evgeny i don't know if i believe that the night brigade has been going around in spaceships for centuries i don't think i buy that however i can see some people prior to skadriel maybe having some spaceships well sigzel comes out and says at one point that the technology for space travel is like older in some places than others yeah so oh, i definitely think there's something like some people have been messing around with it for some time for sure so, like i yeah. I think Yolan's a cad- a, a candidate, depending on the state of that planet. Who who knows, right? Taldane's a candidate, but that depends on autonomy. In mm-hmm. uh, invention Cell. is a candidate. Um, and what do they want uh, Cell? I I I think maybe, um, like on a planet like sort of like what's going on with Utol and with the Yumi planet, where it's like planet maybe some planets that have other planets in the same system we're using it to sort of sure. fly within the system okay. but yeah, this sort sure. of ftl between oh. planetary systems is newer that'd be cool oh yeah okay yeah. That, that's that's very plausible for sure yeah, yeah. i i buy kinda, that kind of kind of like how we go to mars sure yeah yeah, yeah. um someday and i mean I, I guess if you have ships like that like getting them through shades mars wouldn't be very hard right if you you just need to find the perpendicularity that's big enough if you have one yeah yeah yeah. um yeah and i guess uh i was going through list of planets oh uh silverlight could have some pretty advanced technology as well potentially like i i think that's always plausible right i know yeah it'll be interesting to see when they were established yeah 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 so i i think those are the candidates but Anyway, uh, do, do you want to talk about Night Brigade? Because, we're yeah, we definitely I aren't would. solving these. I absolutely want to talk about Night Brigade. I, they are awesome, They're and so I need cool. more of them. They're and like, cool. necromancy, 
necromancy is like my favorite form of like fictional magic. Yeah. And the fact that we finally have like necromancers in the Cosmere and they're like a, a PMC is awesome. That is I love them. I still they're... slander. <laughs> That's that's true. That is true. The lifeless, you know. I feel like everything about this neighbor game, like, but E Steel, the returns, they're, the, I mean, it's, oh, it's an old version like, of the shady I guess, neighbor game, maybe. I guess, like, I have, like, a mental image of necromancy and awakening doesn't quite fit that. Like, to me, necromancy, like, actually involves the souls of the deceased, which is what's. I, no, I sell. I disagree. I disagree with that. Like if you if you raise a corpse from the dead and it's walking around, you're a necromancer. And that I mean, is what I'm happens. Not saying, like, I'm not trying to make an objective point. I'm just saying like the vibes for me. OK, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, Ye Steel could be involved with the Night Brigade, you know, like that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's very I, I, okay, I don't think <laughs> I don't get the sense that the Night Brigade has a very high opinion of like non frenodites Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh but so okay. Night Brigade, they have clearly weaponized shades, right? They mm -hmm. they can clearly control yes. shades. <laughs> Yes, and and what we see is shades walking around, red eyes. Yep, which has been indicative of them being like in their enraged state. Yep, right. Yeah, they they, they go for for the grabby. <laughs> yep. Um, but they clearly have control over them to the extent of the admiral wanting to be alone and the shades that accompany her just walk out of the room yeah so it's not just a simple you know point at the enemy and then the shades go berserk and like swarm that sure, enemy sure. It's, it's a finer level of control so there's a lot of different ways we can go in this conversation but i'm i guess i'm just immediately remembering our conversation about the chard and like controlling that flaw that I'm almost mm -hmm. wondering if the Admiral has some sort of mental control over the shades, kind of like Lord Ruler and Coloss, potentially. She has that weapon, like the, the chain of continuity. The continuity, continuity chain. chain. Continuity yeah. chain, yes. So, which I I don't remember strictly, but I feel like the epilogue suggested that this is how she controls them. Like it somehow connects her to the to the shades. <sighs> It is not actually implied, as far as I can tell, but it's like between. So, so what do we know about continuity chains, right? Not much. Um, <laughs> we see one in Celebrant. Uh, yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, we're, sure we're pretty confident. Has this been directly hey. confirmed? No. Yeah. It's not been directly confirmed, but like a silver chain that's marked as a weapon. I believe sure. it to be correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so we see one there. It is very expensive, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which may or may not mean much because the Court of Gods painting is also very expensive. Sure. Uh, but that's that's an expensive thing. It is in the weapons shop of sure. Celebrant. Uh, Rabonio is gifted one of those by Mraes. And she oh, calls it a continuity that. chain. Yeah. Does she? Yes. I think so. I don't know. She I don't think she calls it a continuity chain. Uh, there's something about there, cognitive anomalies, right? Isn't that there what is she says? An, she says that it anchors you through cognitive anomalies. I think that's an it's epic. A limited use to her for so uh, you, 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 in some Yeah, way. so the the name continuity chain comes from this book. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, uh, but it, it anchors people through cognitive anomalies, and yes, it is of limited use to her. Um, and it is silvery in color. Yes. We don't know whether that means silver. Yeah, and I think there's theories that uh, that it is a dragon steel thing. I know that has been theories about the celebrant yeah. chain. Yep. Uh, uh, whenever, whenever a special a special metal comes up, it's either dragon steel, silver, or aluminum, or a god or metal, a or a god metal. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, that's a wide list of things, to be honest. A lot of silvery metals out there. Yes. Of yeah. The lowest value. I, I guess. I guess it wouldn't be erasium because that's goldish. I don't remember. Yeah, erasium is like gold was speckled with red. Um, I am not remembering these god metal colors off the top of my head. And yeah. come on, Eric. I gotta Get with I, it. I gotta no, remember no. uh the remember green lauracium. Mm. You can never Dad. find it. It's not a thing. Mm-hmm. Matt I, remembers. Uh, some some people hallucinated that. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Oh yeah, that was Mandela effect for sure. Yeah. Um so do we think the continuity chain is what is allowing her to control the shades? Like I don't necessarily no. think that's true. I don't think so. Not necessarily. It could be true, but I just don't think we've been pointed in that direction specifically. Uh, here's a question that I have. As we know that the Night Brigade are very scary and they've destroyed places like heavily. Mm-hmm. Do we think that they have another like larger scale like spaceship style weapon that they employ or are the shades their primary weapon? Because there's a part of me that thinks they have like a big weapon. And there's a part of me that thinks maybe they yeah. use them like the ghosts and Lord of the Rings or they just kind of like swarm mm-hmm. continents and like yeah. everybody. I but. I don't think they have like a, like a mini Death Star on their ship, but I do think that like a ship being able to bombard the planet from orbit is already a massive like planet destroying sort of thing. Yeah. Like they could even if they if they wanted to be fancy, they could even haul in an asteroid and just drop it from the orbit. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking like glassing or something. You know, sure, sure, just sure. that glass. Oh yeah. So stuff, so the the but... glassing, I mean, like that's. In like sci-fi literature, that's usually just code for like nuclear bombardment. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yes. How do we think the Night Brigade gets more living members? Like, do you think there's like encouraged to marry and have children, and it's almost like their whole like nation, or, like they almost have like a nation within themselves of like. Do you think they like have, or maybe like a nation of like civilians that they like recruit from somewhere? I don't know. I think That's a good question. They could all be immortal. If they're on, if they're on Silverlight, there could be a Threadernite population on Silverlight that joins the Night Brigade at times. Uh, they they could be recruiting from like all the various like Threadernite communities around the Cosmere. <laughs> oh, like Canticle though, they seem to be surprised to meet these guys. Yeah. yeah, true. But I mean, maybe, maybe like in Era Four, we're gonna see like Canticle Frenodites in Night Brigade. Now that they know they're here, my impression is that they're not that numerous. That maintaining a population needs to be something they like make an effort. Like the but way I-, I think of them is. A small-ish group of people, like a brigade, right? And every now and then they either add a new person or replace a per- probably add. I don't think they like cycle people in and out. But I don't think it's regular enough that they would need a procedure around that. But I mean, I, their whole thing is like you know, the dead fight for them, and when you die, you're still a shite. Like, I feel like they're with the whole thing being, like, you remain a part of the Night Brigade when you die. Like, I feel like there has to be enough death where, you know, if you didn't ha- at least have a way to recruit new members, then eventually, like, I, I feel like, I, I think you would need to at least somewhat regularly recruit members as people die. I mean, if if they were active for centuries, then, like, if they if they don't lose that many shades, then the amount of shades would just increase slowly over time until it snowballs. It's it's crazy. The shades are wearing the uniforms that they had when they died. <laughs> like that is. I feel like shades are not that hard to kill. You know, like they did it with the silver knife. Maybe these guys are a little meaner, but I assume they can and do lose shades. You know. Yeah. I if I recall correctly, even shades on Trinity still wear like whatever clothing they like how is that true i think i have a memory of silence describing shades as still like resembling the people that they were before and wearing the clothing that they presumably 
wore before and like mm. the older the shades the shade is the more uh distorted that image is mm -hmm. uh the more degraded <sighs> yeah like can you kill the shades like i my impression is the armies of the dead are their primary weapon that's my assumption mm -hmm. here um and it seems like that must mean that the shades are not easy to kill i i think it's like planetary weapons not like death star level stuff but like raising cities level okay. stuff okay yep they 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 i'm pretty sure they have nukes I mean, if you have a spaceship, you probably have some technology for like something kind of like a trillium bomb or something. But yeah, they would have right? an anti investiture bomb too. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, you know, yeah. Or, uh, there's or a lot an of investiture fissure reaction bomb. Yes, there's a lot of potential investiture weapons. Yeah. Um, but then why do you even need the shades? You know, like. I don't know. I mean, maybe you, maybe sometimes Beer. you don't want to class a city. Maybe you just want to take over a city. Like yeah. nu nuclear weapons can't hold ground. Yes, yeah, that's true. A, a famous, a famous Rosharan proverb, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sun Tzu said that, actually. Yeah. It's, do uh, the, uh, the, not, not the Sun Walker, the Sun, the Sun King, no. What the hell was his name? Sunmaker. The Sunmaker. Sun there we go. Sunmaker yeah, yeah, yeah. said that. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, sun, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Too many suns. Too many suns. Do uh, Grace and Allah, do you believe that this admiral is the same admiral when they were going uh, over to free the homeland from the evil? Same, you, same woman? Give the listeners some context. Well, oh. so the premise to the Night Brigade novel is that it opened with like this group of people going to back to the homeland to fight the evil and then all their boats sank uh so it didn't go great for them and uh, we had a conversation in the reactions episode that uh, maybe their leader is the same leader from back then and that's why she's called an admiral because they, she had a fleet of ships back then uh you know i'm gonna tell you this i don't think this is the same admiral i think they have no normal or normalish lifespans and that's because in the epilogue uh the guy says they had an admiral so mm. she, her title is the admiral but he says like they had an admiral despite being an army which to me implies that like an admiral is a title that's passed down through people but i think that's more just a commentary on uh military ranks and that the title. usually that wouldn't be how that is uh, i i does, know, I know but like, yeah i know but like to me this it, this gave me an impression that the, she is not the first admiral okay like i don't i did not get any like clues from this that these people these people are immortal or like exceptionally long lived above other societies it just seems to me that a lot of the cosmere players we meet are or have exceptional have lived exceptionally long lives for one reason or another i just feel like it would be more interesting if they were like a generational thing it definitely could be but yeah i just just based on what we've seen you know like all the Southern Skadrians we've met from Silverlight are immortal. Chris seems to be immortal. Nas seems to be immortal. Uh, you know, it's not like we're meeting a lot of people who don't. Bayon seems to now be immortal, you know. Grace, what's your vote? Immortal, not immortal. Um, I mean, even if she is, like, it wouldn't surprise me if she got enough breath to be immortal now, because that seems like That's fair. a relatively easy thing for someone in her position to do, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the same one from the Threnody novel. Sure. Like, That's fair. Because there's not necessarily a way for, like, if they didn't immediately, like, depending on when they left the world, maybe this, you know, title passed between a couple of hands before the person who got it got away to be immortal. 
Could be true. Maybe yeah. it's like, like maybe, mm-hmm. maybe she'll be like, I don't, I don't know. Milit- maybe she's like a private in the milit- in the novel, and then by the time it gets to net, like she's still. Maybe, I don't know. I think that could be cool if like we meet her, but she's someone low ranking in the in the Trinity novel. Sure, she was, okay. was involved, but not. But she was still involved, not but not in at charge. The time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I, I also think like I also think there were several changes in leadership because like going from a would be liberators of the homeland to a PMC that nukes planets is a big shift. So I I feel like it happened over the course of a few generations of leaders. I don't know. Mm. People you, change. That, I feel like the evil. The if anything can change you, yeah. that description of the evil would. It is. It is. Like, it is something that is called the evil. Like, I, I I don't know what the Night Brigade novel could possibly be to get us to, like, presumably the origin of this organization, and as well as exploring this Threnody stuff. But I wouldn't be surprised if these Night Brigade people managed to talk with one of these <laughs> these giant things. With the evil mountain and, sized manifestations of investigation and like mm-hmm. channeled it or used it or communed with it or something and that changed some things like there's a lot of crazy directions that that novel could go and i have just no idea what that mm-hmm. could mean maybe the night brigade novel is like i wouldn't say like a tragedy but more like a villain origin story maybe it ends yeah. like the group goes there hoping to defeat the evil and end up working for the evil yeah i think i think that's super plausible yeah. or or being changed by the evil yeah. so that they're yeah, maybe yeah. maybe that's why they can control shades maybe the evil gave them the power yeah it definitely doesn't seem like they beat it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it still yeah. Exists in Bella, man. yeah they definitely didn't um, beat the yeah. evil but i don't know it's weird how only the shades were in the forests of hell, right? But then, yeah, like all these Threnodites can become shades, you know? I don't know. There, there's, there's something that I'm missing here. Unless the only way that makes sense is if all that happened right after Ambition died, right? That's that's the part that that is a little confusing for yeah. sure. Like that, that's confusing to me. Uh, but ah oh, man, I I want I want to see the Night Brigade. Maybe it's not. Maybe the thing with the shades wasn't that there are only shades in the forests of hell. Maybe the thing was like there only are not shades in Homeland. Maybe it was some quality of the Homeland, not the forests of hell. Oh, and maybe like somehow that got transformed into the evil somehow or something. Yeah, and maybe and like so like the shades the shades would appear everywhere in the cosmere except for the homeland. And the Frenodites back in Shadows for Silence just weren't aware of it because they, you know, like maybe that's homeland and forests. Maybe maybe like when the ambition shattered, that's why they like moved to the homeland to live because there was somehow protected from the shades. But then of like something like I don't know what it would be like something eventually like hundreds of years or even like thousands of years later happens that causes the homelands to be overtaken by the evil. That could be cool. So there is a, a, a half-formed idea that I have okay. that revolves around the way that like the chorus exists as oh a shade comes up and it gets either sucked into or attracted to or drawn into the chorus seemingly Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have a hard confirmation for that but there are implications that it happens yes and the idea of hey what if something similar happens in the homeland oh it shades gets stuck to the other continent so there are no shades there because there is evil there Oh yeah, I was gonna say like you just do that for thousands of years, and eventually the volume of shades becomes the evil. Yeah. So so like, what if the evil is essentially a big ass chorus? Ooh, that's uh. cool. That, I don't know if that quite cool. fits the description. Like, I think you describe the evil differently. It. Yeah. Oh, let's let's pull up that description and read yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. We absolutely need that description of the evil. I think. 
I, I, oh, I, I put it in the doc. All right. I have, I have the quote. It's still there on your home world. I've seen it. Well, manifestations of it. Wild, unchained investiture come to life with its own alien will, forming mountain sized figures with impossible, unnerving features and unknowable motivations. Serenity was not a place one visited to relax. You know, the, <laughs> hell does seem preferable than that for sure. Like I, I, right. I get it. I get it. Threnodites. Like, yeah, you got to leave there. God, that's so cool that Brandon put that so, in here. God. So maybe it's like the investiture is like, you know, ambitions, ambient investiture. Sure. And then yeah. like the process of it developing its own will just oh, took yeah. a long time. Like it wasn't an instant thing and it took like yeah. thousands of years to do. Yeah, and that's when it possible. sort of, and that's what caused people to start to leave, like have to flee. Yeah. Once it reached that tipping point. Yeah. yeah. I think that's very plausible for sure. Like and like in the, maybe like in the meanwhile, it kept the shades away. Yeah. I think you can probably have a mix of those, right? So we, we rewind the clock back to ambition's death, mm -hmm. right? Yes. There, there were people on Threnody. They lived normal lives. Everything was fine ambitious ambitious ambition uh either gets mortally wounded or dies i don't know which one of these would be like the inciting incident for all of this but i don't think it matters and then a bunch of ambitious investiture gets dumped onto the planet or into the system and now the people who uh have had lived in the homeland for a while get one this infusion of what we get to eventually know as like shade shaped uh investiture like onto their soul sure but also more importantly a bunch of investiture is now in the homeland yeah it's not doing sure. anything it's just a bunch of investiture right but it's there and maybe while it is there as people die this like extra chunk that gets stapled onto them doesn't do anything. It just gets sucked into into the big pool that will eventually become the evil. Okay, this is more plausible than the other the theory. And sure. Then, okay. And then over time, this big pool, both by virtue of time and by virtue of being further infused by like people dying and their like shades getting sucked into that develops into this self-aware-ish Lovecraftian like monster. And, and the people who had lived there for a long time are like, nope, screw this, I'm out. And they go over to the forests of hell. Now, I think the open question here is, were there already shades in the forests of hell? Or did shades start arising as people started I, getting there? All right. I think maybe there was a small population in the forest of hell that all died out before the homeland people fled there and were already shades. There were at least some number of shades because there were no predators in the forest of hell when people arrived because the predators had violated the simple rules and had all been eaten. Yeah, so I think I think there had to have been a population that died and became shades and over time it just like compounded where the shades like killed them all. Yeah. yeah. I could I could see like shades before and then before and other humans how to stop discovered it. that yeah. continent yeah. were like, oh my sure, god. Yeah. 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 It's definitely possible. Because like if you send a ship and the ship never returns, you'd be like, oh I mean, we didn't know about it, right? And yeah. that could have happened centuries ago. The shades flourish. Um Evgeny, I don't think these big ambition chunks need extra infusions to eventually come to life. Like no, that's it, it, it doesn't need to be the case. Well, I mean, uh, that doesn't need that. But it, it's it's how I'm explaining the the lack of shades. Yeah, and I, why that, shades don't appear there? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking like there could be something like these big uh, globs of investiture. Like I don't know, push the shades somewhere else I, I didn't really uh, think of the mechanics but like there's something about there being these big chunks of investiture that 
somehow deals with the shades somehow uh, but rather than like sucking it in but i don't know yeah well there's also the fact that not everybody who dies turns into a shade you yeah. know so like maybe there's something affecting why that happens that's occurring in the homeland mm. yeah like, sure. not every turn who dies does become a shade yeah mm-hmm. um god the the evil is so bonkers that I mm-hmm. hate the Night Brigade mo- I know, book. I know. Like, I know. Dan! No! no. I want Brandon I hate that to write idea. It. I don't want Dan's Brandon. I don't want Dan's Dust Brigade book or I guess it wouldn't be called that anymore. <laughs> or ever. In no timeline was it ever called that. But um, <laughs> I I feel like I'm missing some context here. What's up? What's up? We've we've but, done. Uh, my, the context for me is oh. people who say that Dan should write the night brigade because Dan likes horror and stuff. And I would like Brandon to write the book that he had an idea to write. And Dan can just like have his own projects. That's my stance. Okay. Yeah. Let's maybe on the note of shades and stuff. Let's talk about the chorus. Cause the chorus is right. crazy. Uh, there is that weirdness of, the shades just appear in the reliquary. That's weird. Uh, what else is weird? But helpful. Hmm? But helpful. But hel- very helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. You. All of the shades in a reliquary are like a hive mind type thing. They seem mm-hmm. to share memories. Yeah. <laughs> they speak, which is just generally it's not something we see from shades. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And. You can take some of the mist and make a new reliquary when you want a new settlement. Okay, yeah, you can, you can sure. Um, and they're capable of following plans and manufacturing things out of raw materials. Yeah. yeah. And Rebecca is like, that's my brother in there. Like, that's what she sees, which is that. She does see divinity. She sees like some smoke when divinity dies and she swears she sees him in there. But and the way that we see in Shadows for Silence, where her grandmother, she feels like might still have some small memory of her and mm. seems to be a somewhat distinct yeah. individual. Her doesn't seem like these shades. They all act like they're the original shades that arrive in the planet, despite the fact that maybe some of them are people who died very recently. Yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting. So I wonder if the chorus a little like the Borg, they're assimilating all the memories, but they're still basically going off the initial people who died. Like that's sort of the core of that, and they're just like building off more and more memories. Maybe, yeah, kind of, kind of. So, like, they are essentially those original people, but they've learned from the other people who have died since then, and all their knowledge or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know how that works, but kind of the the difference between here is the knowledge that you have through personal experience and here's the knowledge that you've learned through like eating other people's memories. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's fascinating that they're all like hive, like essentially clones of each other. Like that's (laughs) very bonkers. It's it's almost like the original people who became the chorus almost have stronger identities almost and that's like the Mm -hmm. other people who die like shades retain a little bit but i think you could make an argument that it's a bit like yumi where like their identities are like a lot weaker in things and maybe their identities are being copied by the original chorus's identity type thing I, I was thinking it reminds me a little bit of how Nightblood is unable to shake the memories of his initial first moments where those were imprinted yeah. just so strongly yeah. on him and his mm-hmm. moment of creation Interesting. That and, 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 it, and it takes him a past. long time to like learn when things change mm. mm-hmm. and in some cases it never does like he still thinks Shashara is alive yeah mm-hmm. but he is able to you know retain knowledge of Vivenna for example yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. 
Yeah. That's, that's a good color. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like the people of Canticle in general have some weird connection things going on where they're like that's true. more strongly connected to each other than the average people of a, you know, place of a similar size in the Cosmere. Ooh, yeah, we should talk about like the heat transferring because like that that's actually yeah. kind of a bonkers thing that the Canticleites like. So maybe we should talk about the Canticleites some um, uh, along with that. But so we, like, we should. I don't think that's nearly as crazy as other things. No, can. absolutely not. But uh, man, it, it's. I like the chorus being able to like construct things because it is a bit like a spren creating things with manifesting design. itself as a yeah. fabulous skeleton. Yeah. And stuff like that. The spirits actually a lot more reminiscent of the spirits in Kamashi. Than oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, uh, but I guess, but still like the spirits are really more like Spren because they turn into the thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, like, yeah right. no, it's, yeah. it's a lot more similar, but the Spren, like I, I think we traditionally think of, of Spren as manifesting as metal and the spirits, I think, manifest as other materials as well. Yeah, for but, sure. But in this case, the shades are not manifesting. They're constructing and does like yeah. Re yeah. they're forging and creating things and that are very are complicated they are, machines they are basically yeah, they like the stuff in yeah yeah uh, they are the, basically the way... smartest 3d printer yeah yeah yes the chorus is a giant this, 3d printer yes this this comparison might be like totally off base but okay, okay. like we see like sigzil talk to elegy about like this sort of bloodlust she feels, right? Like mm -hmm. this need to like move and act and kill, which yes. I, I think is not that different from necessarily from what the shades experience, right? Like, like Ooh. that. Okay. But like, okay, just if you're, it's like, I almost wonder if their construction is almost like kind of doing a similar thing to what Sigzil tells Elegy to do of like, we're focusing that bloodlust energy on something else. In this case, like, constructing things hmm. Hmm. it is interesting to me as well that they seem to act like you know like here we are we're your ancestors we've got wisdom to share but if you open this cage i will eat you you know yeah. like yeah yeah exactly have, like, they still have that side of them as well and, yeah. and they do like the the beaconites do say that like sometimes they just say like blood they're, like they're not always as coherent as what nomad sees yeah yeah, I don't know. I just, I just feels like there was like an interesting comparison there of like being told like we you know we have a character who does you know for slightly for like different reasons feels that kind of like mindless bloodlust yeah. you know urge to kill everything in sight yeah. and like they're like you know obviously Elegy has I think more of her like ability to reason and identity and be like okay like I can choose to channel it but it's like. I wonder if almost there's a similar thing going on where like they've somehow figured out that like this is just that sort of like urge to like move and act and kill channeled into something else. Mm. Yeah, you can probably and I mean to, to an extent you're doing just that, but you can probably draw some parallels between like mm -hmm. the innate psychological urges that come from certain types of investitures. Uh, you know, Stormlight urges you to act. Uh, Voidlight sure. uh, inflames your emotions. Yep. Uh, whatever has whatever's going on with the chard urges them to act and f so like it's a little bit similar to Stormlight, but it's not exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's not. Mm -hmm. And so like you can era, probably draw some mm -hmm. parallels between investiture induces certain states of mind. Shades are made of investiture it stands to reason that they act in or or at least feel compelled to act in accordance to whatever it is that they are investiture which is who they are which is what they are they are investiture like pushes them towards i don't understand why ambition 
these things don't seem ambition-y with like the shades and how the shades act. Like I don't understand that. I don't understand the evil doing what it's doing, but all right, maybe it's weird situations with ambition dying that like shaped the investor weirdly. Sure. That's like, there's like a death aspect. Maybe, maybe it's death like aspect, bitterness aspect. The shades yeah. like limit their ambition almost, you know, like it prevents them from like, from building too large. They can't, kindle fire they can't like kill people you know what i mean like it kind of keeps a lid on things Mm. maybe there's something there i was gonna say what if it's like the context of because this you know happened while ambition was fighting odium it's like ambition tinged with sort of that desire to like fight and win at all costs that's kind of interesting that's that's a little bit what i was getting at with like the idea of like revenge and and yeah yeah because like win, like winning at all costs like when like it's like ambitious but in the context of like a fight for your life and it's not necessarily bad in the context of like a fight for their life but just once put out in the world it becomes like kill no matter what kind of odium plus ambition being like a uh, revenge or vengeance that's a good sh- hybrid shard mm-hmm. right there i don't i don't think i don't think that I, I don't think any of this like touches on the like ambition is I think about personal like improvement of personal status and revenge and vengeance and things like that don't feel yeah, I guess that's true that's you know it's it's I think spite is, honor is, is, yeah. <laughs> is closer to that yeah how do we think the original Canticlite slash Zellion did something to make the original people who died into the chorus so that they retained memories? Or do we think that is a natural consequence of what happened? I don't know. I, yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a, natural consequence of the weird connection stuff that's happening here. It's just weird to me that it's so mechanical. You know what I mean? Like that, it, but, but for these machines, they would be free roaming around eating people. So why do they end up in these machines? Like what's causing that? Like Are these going into the relic quarries? Like, right the same yeah, like why do they end up in the relic quarries? Maybe you know? it's like a, maybe it's a similar thing to like the father machine from Yumi. Maybe like there's something about the reliquary the same way the father machine is drawing in spirits. The oh, the okay, reliquary. that's kind of interesting. In um, maybe it's like a similar <laughs> on a mechanical stand. Just maybe whatever I imagine Zelion did to create the reliquary is a bit better at discerning between different types of spiritual entities than the father machine. But it's like. Do they, do they have to build like a specific reliquary when they take some of the mist to create a new one, or can I, they just kind of like? I I think they do mention like special boxes or special containers or whatever. Okay. At least they're built strongly. They say they, that they for are sure. built strongly. Yeah. yeah. Open uh, top though. The open top's open just fine. Yeah. Up. <laughs> clearly, well, you gotta clearly have, the shape. It's like a shark tank. You want people able to fall in just in case <laughs> exactly like that well, um, you have to feed the shade, shades sometimes i guess yeah, you know just, you just gotta get the blood the thirst metal. out of there you know like th- these people they could be sun hearts like ah, i give them to the shades they're hungry they're getting a little too rowdy here they're getting hangry um i th- think i would i was gonna pitch kind of the idea of hey the evo draws Potentially, potentially draws shades. Okay, sure. Maybe, maybe same idea here, right? Like, not necessarily something that needs to be set up intentionally and mechanically, but a side effect of, you know, a bunch of shades draw more shades, or a bunch of ambition investiture draws more ambition, like something to that effect. Mm. I, I can buy that the connection and the shades appearing in the reliquaries is a natural consequence of things that have been set up. I just think 
maybe the original Zellion had to do something to make these original shades actually retain more of their memory somehow. And I, I don't maybe. know what that would be, but I feel like that just doesn't happen naturally. Like, I think if you like, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the original Zellion did something to like connect the shades to each other. And it's somehow propagated to the rest of the living people of Canticle, and that's why they are now super connected. If anything, I would go the other way on that. Oh? Um, that because the people are connected, that's why the shades... Also memory. remain connected. Also no. remain connected, sure. So, right. so original Zellian, like, forged a connection. Maybe it was a bondsmith. I mean, if he's making oh perpendicularities, right? Like, that, I mean, to be fair, you know, whether yeah. whether we use the Rosharan definition of a bondsmith yeah. or not, you know, oh, maybe it was a shark. Who knows? That's 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 actually not implausible. Impossible. Yes, that's, that's, that's possible. <laughs> oh, I was, oh, I, maybe like this goes back a little bit. Maybe like uh, ambitions investiture just sort of like is inherently subsumes other investiture into itself as like a property in sort of the same way Brandon said like the duality of virtuosity is like or a breath theme yeah or breath being sticky is like sort of because mm. it also kind of fits ambition that idea of like it sort of inherently sort of takes in other investiture to become like coalesce and get more yeah, yeah cl sure. climbing the corporate ladder sure yeah, yeah okay kind of works yeah, I think original Zellian did something to connect all these people specifically. I, I think yep. he did something, and by that consequence, that's what's why these shades are weird. I don't think I this would have just happened randomly. But the, the, the Night Brigade shades are also weird. I think they're weird for different reasons. Yeah, I, think I think they're, they're weird, weird because reasons. the Night Brigade is doing like specific things might control stuff yeah there's there's, there's oh. certainly no evidence that the night brigade shades act anything like the chorus right just that yeah. the night brigade can tr control the shades yeah. yeah i would not be surprised to find the night brigade having some sort of chorus thing that can build stuff for them like that's perfectly plausible for them to have but we just don't have any evidence of that Ooh, so one other Ooh. canticle thing we didn't really talk about is this heat transfer thing, which is very interesting. Like all of the theming of this planet is very fiery and the, the people who are canticlites being able to transfer heat back and forth is very interesting. Um, which definitely makes intimacy challenging. Is <laughs> that, that's, that was a valid it ba it conversation. It balances out. It balances, it balances out. Out. But uh, that's that's just very interesting. That mm. That's how well, that well, works. I'm curious when it happened. You yeah. know, like how long were they there before somebody was like, "Oh damn, what was that?" It's it's got to be like you know, day one. <laughs> day one. Oh really? You don't think it was like. Chartic radiation theory, like years of being on the planet. All right, all right, all right. Hold on. All right. <laughs> David, hold up. Yeah. Let me unplug my headset. Oh no! <laughs> You've been wanting to talk about chartic radiation for the past five hours. I've not. No, that was just. Well, I. Oh, that was that was me talking about it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> what what is that? Chartic radiation <laughs> theory. Okay. Why? Chartic so, radiation theory is. What is this? Why are you bringing it up? lore that is when it's basically wondering the question when somebody if somebody walks from one planet to another do they eventually come to become a person like that planet just by benefit of having been on that shard exposed to either been on that planet exposed to either the shard or the investiture there if you move to like a population of skaterians to nalthus will one day someone give birth to a child with a breath or will they not Oh, you that's know, that's not the theory I thought you were. Referencing. I have no idea. This is what I know it as. This, this is what is I know it as. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. I I thought you were, which explains why I was confused by you bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought this was the idea that um, 
White Sand gets charged by nearby investiture because that because that investiture is like essentially leaking radiation, investiture radiation. <laughs> No, no, and no, that's no, what no. like no, energizes the sand. No, 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 <laughs> nothing about that. Not no. that. Um, we, we, don't, we don't even know. We didn't even. White sand was barely. Was just a thing that sometimes it was his first email book. people back then. But we didn't talk about it. No, we had, there was a PM to. thread you had to be added to. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Because it was, it was illegal content here. Um, okay, so why are you bringing this up? Well, because I'm curious when these people started having this ability and if it changed naturally over time and they were exposed okay. to the investor and the power of this planet and one day they that was how they changed or if something more specific happened. So so when when did they become children of Canticle? Yeah. Yeah, which is, I assume would correlate with them being able to do this heat thing. I would agree. A canticle thing. I although it seems like anyone can become a Donart or I th- David, the sun okay. um, That I, seems kind like that seems less of a canticle thing and more all these people were connected thing. Yeah. Uh, so but it's, that's the canticle's thing, it's which heat. which we tied back to the chorus. So like not yeah. necessarily something that is like native to the planet, but something that was like done to or with these people done to like maybe zellian connected them together right like it was a big kumbaya ritual prayer yeah sure i don't know i i like I like I, I i think that's possible um <sighs> connecting them together though doesn't connect them to the planet right so yeah. i don't see True. why that would need to be the case so i could still see it taking a few generations before it's, they are considered they see themselves yeah. as canticlites right uh, so it's something that i just thought about that's interesting to me is it's almost like similar i think to the way that the planet draws in the sun in a bit like yeah i i, I like hmm. there's like a parallel there between like they can pass and like they can pass this heat between them and also the planet sort of draws in the heat slash investiture from the sun yeah, there's there's some there's thematic similarities. I don't know mechanically how that works, but yeah, like thematically, I totally agree. Right? I I do feel like my my personal opinion on this is that this is like a weird side effect to whatever connected them so strongly to each other. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe just because they're on Canticle, it manifests in this way. Maybe yeah the the parallel with the planet is an interesting one yeah i, yeah, I, I think wonder, like, there are kind of on canticle what a, yeah i almost wonder if it's like sure the mm-hmm. radiation of a different way it's like an effect of being in that area of like dawn where you're still getting that like huge influx of like investiture from the sun that causes the plants to go rapidly grow rapidly oh sure yeah yeah because uh, there is that like, uh, but it's and it's like because they're like sort of being it's it's I don't know. Like, I don't know that they're necessarily being bombarded with any more investiture than like a Rosharan is. But like, I mean, probably. Right. Because the Rosharans are not hanging out in the high storm all the time. Yeah. yeah. You got spears around them. But we know that that benefits them as well. Just having them yeah. nearby. Mm-hmm. Kind yeah, of and like, we know that like even the Rosharans are like starting to slowly hear their rhythms. So. It is like a slower adaptation to the planet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or do something rhythm like sometimes. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. My can. personal opinion to just throw it in contrasting is that I think this is the natural arcana of the planet that has developed with them mm. here. And this is how it's expressed is via the system of dawn hearts which they create particularly well and uh the passing of heat back and forth yeah so listeners i I think two episodes into this it's time to come clean yes at one point in the development of this book sun hearts used to be called the dawn hearts yes yeah that is true yeah just just so you know 
Uh, that's, so go back to the seven times David has said that's, that's don't it. Look, it's hard to one to ten. It's stuck. Yeah, you know, honestly, this should be you. I'll, you shall be impressed. This is the first time that I have had one of these switches that I have not been able to do. <laughs> Honestly, okay, yeah, we've, we've, we've had we've had quite a few of them. Um, the do, the don't sons. I, it, David, I I do agree. This is like the natural sort of manifestation of this stuff uh, on this planet, right? Because it, it's all heat based and fiery. Like that. That's that's what's happening here. I I could mm. see that working right, and it, it's very reminiscent. It's very evocative of breath, right? Yes. You yeah. can't draw breath from other people necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can certainly give it. And so mm-hmm. there is, and breath is like similar to heat in that it's kind of innate to people. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah okay, it's just sure. a discreet, a discreet amount. It's instead yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah, you, a yeah. volume. Yeah, it's just interesting. <laughs> It's interesting that these sun hearts like are this heat, and then that it's su- it can superheat like the water and stuff. And yeah. well, so what what's happening there is like the the sun heart itself is not hot. That's true. Yeah, but it can sure. just so be used they to have, do that. Yeah, yeah they they have they 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 are a a big ass battery, right? Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, in, in terms of capacity, not in terms of size. Um, and so they have engines that are able to like draw in that investiture, turn it into heat energy, and then mm-hmm. like superheat the water and then like steam engine to space. I do think it's interesting, and I think I brought this up during the reactions episode, that there is a parallel here between investiture and heat in the sa- in a similar way to how there was in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter where like the spirits were in the ground and they were what was causing like the the uh, torio world to be hot sure and yeah, so okay. post the resolution of uh of the book uh when the spirits were free once again like the torio the torish uh ecosystem was able to once again thrive because the heat went back up once again. It's like not um, the same, it's, right? And so, like, is that what caused that? I, 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 I totally missed that. I genuinely just thought that, like, the the shroud blocked the sun, so it cooled the planet. It was, it was like the, the heat was coming from the ground. Yeah, it was coming from the mm-hmm. ground. Oh uh, yeah, I just assumed it like soaked in the sunlight, like baked it, like if the pavement gets hot and the or, like the sand gets hot. I don't know. I, I completely I mentioned missed it in that the part. End. Yeah, I, I that compl- that went way over my head. Yeah, uh, but it's it's also that it is the idea of like in stormlight when you are like when you draw stormlight from a jet or like when you draw stormlight very quickly, it generates like frost around you a lot of the times. So there 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 are interesting parallels between like we obviously we've known about the matter energy investiture equivalence for a long time it's interesting to see that be shown in books so like in such a rapid succession right sure Uh, because we had Mm -hmm. the occasional note of that in stormlight but that was about it and then we had yumi and then we had sunlit man sure um so kind of the idea of heat slash energy and investiture are they're not equivalent, but they go hand in hand a lot of the times. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I I have we we have some other bips and bops to to oh, wrap things up. Uh, okay. and then we'll be done with this epic long recording. Um <laughs> Time Tellers is a very weird name for a group and isn't very Skadrian sounding either. We got watches. We got watches. Uh, time is... Maybe they started as a watchmaking company before <laughs> they went into weapons research. Before they became a military. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, I was thinking Time Bubble. Yeah, yeah, maybe... <sighs> 
Well, it's like uh, one faction among the many Skadrian political movements. Yeah. What a crazy line. It there. does it does give me kind of the idea of like the Skadrian government political scene. Like it gives me like city states vibes more than it gives me like an empire vibes. If that like it's a federation uh, of planets. Federation is like probably a better term, yeah. I was thinking government more like, um, yeah, like, 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 uh, political, like, parties almost. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. They got a parliamentary system. Yeah, yeah. This. I guess maybe I'm biased against that because, uh, uh, well, one, in the U.S., there's only two that ever matter. Sure. And so it's a little bit difficult for me to imagine, like, a system where there's, like, you know, a dozen. But there's there's a lot uh, of places in Europe that are like that. Yeah, 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 I, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's how it works here. You have like eight parts, nine yeah. or ten parties that have to form coalitions to yeah. govern. I am I little known fact, I'm not <laughs> native to the states. I'm like, just I, saying I, you're like, you're like saying it's like I no, can't conceive of another. Thing. I, I I said it's difficult because okay. I am used to this. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um. Mm-hmm. The other thing I'm thinking is like in the court of an emperor, you can also have political factions of people who are just like vying for favor and stuff. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. You know, like, it's so like it's this, this guy's really faction. There. It's this guy's faction. In a party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I just, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think this is like a meta a little bit, but I don't think Skadrill is going to be an empire partially because it's like from now on the earth analog and i feel like brandon sort of is going to have a bit of a u.s centric like <laughs> earth analog i don't know like, you don't that it's gonna well, fall under the control of an authoritarian like kelsier and he'll just we could. I suppose. There's <laughs> that's well, that, that's so, very plausible to me yeah, yeah i think we have to very much keep in mind that the well like one of the time teller people that nomad speaks with is like hey do you can you speak a civilized language like Maoish? And so it sounds like at the so like if, if we're not talking about like a global empire type of stuff, like a planetary empire type of stuff, we are looking at a situation where Maoish is the equivalent of like English on that, this planet. That certainly it certainly doesn't look good for the Northerners in yeah, Era so Three. It's, it's, for it's, sure. the, it's the it's the fantasy common, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. And yeah, uh, so that that's just interesting that I, I could imagine that these time tellers are some like southerner faction, and like I'm sure there's been tons of mixing. I at don't this stage. Yeah, I, I I don't know if there is a meaningful distinction. Like I don't think if if southern schedule is a thing anymore that north. Like I think it's sure. just schedule. At yeah, this point. yeah, that's that's probably yeah. true. Um. They didn't be wearing masks, did they? Nope. No. Nope. They just put those like metal things by the Yeah, they have like earrings. Or like a, like a face. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the, the, the metal the metal fetish that no. Maybe the new medallions. I always wonder about that, if that's yeah. what medallions look like now. It it does sort of uh indicate perhaps that the Malwish did like dominate the North and uh, at least like this is the most common language now. Uh, culturally at the very least. Culturally. I guess. Although maybe just with these people, like if they're a faction that's primary Malwish, maybe that's their definition of a civilized tongue. You know, it's not like there haven't been plenty of places where, you know, another language might be a civilized tongue in a certain context and not in another, you know. Oh, they definitely that, seem prominent. That feels like a weird thing to say when you are, you know, out in the boonies of the galaxy. Yeah, see, see it, it does yeah. seem like Malwish is a super common, but I, I yeah, guess I it's... Mean that, I think that, like, Ska could also be as common. Like, even there are two big common languages, you know? Yeah, that's, 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 that's definitely possible. I... It's just interesting that they're maskless and they're like civilized language Malwish. Uh, so well, like, to, yeah. yeah, to me, that seems like maybe they've culturally adapted, though, if they've yeah. given up on masks, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, maybe some kind of a mixture, right? I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if there's Malwish fundamentalists just like, you got to keep your masks on. What the hell, yeah. guys? And a lot of people yeah. are like, hey, we don't need this anymore. This is silly. Like, yeah. that's probably the, possible. The deniers took over. Finally. The deniers of masks, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Not impossible. <laughs> I just, why, why are they time tellers? Why is Brandon just like, here's this totally random world building element we'll, you'll never see in like... No, yeah, don't create don't create a care uh, like category of Skadrian political factions just yet, folks. What this? I don't know. We'll see what brand. Let's let's let's, politics is not Brandon's like strongest suit. So I'm just like (laughs) we'll see what this ends up being. Let's stick to categorizing the shards into Don Shard categories and leave (laughs) leave the Skadrian politics for later. I don't know why I call that. Like it's such a weird, almost weird Illuminati ish type. <laughs> name of what's a weird thing? to me is the capitalization of the like yeah brandon doesn't case. pascal case the thing like yeah. he's like yeah. like wind runners the r is not capitalized normally so you know. maybe they've got a nothian side yeah I, that's what I, I, I almost wonder <sighs> i wonder almost if time tellers is like the tellers of time as in like the tellers of history i don't know I don't know that, how well that works. I feel like from your face, you don't like that, Eric. I, I just, <laughs> I, I, I can't make much sense of it either way. I like, I'm reminded of like the storm father implying that like time is a surge, uh, oh, like when he would, like he lists Whoa. like gravitation <laughs> and like uh, uh, something else, and then time, like. He doesn't imply it's a surge, but like he puts it on the same tier as other fundamental forces in the Rosharan system. <sighs> I don't. I, Maybe it's like I, time tellers in the sense of like they tell how time flows because like they have the time controlling. Al- oh, they're, they are uh, known for their time controlling allomancy. Yeah, but the lady like straight up still pushes. I, I know. I'm, I'm not saying size. like they. Every one of yeah. them does that. It's just like what what they might be like known for as a fiction, but that feels like a weird thing for a political group to do. Yeah, like what 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 is this faction's goals and things? Uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll have to see. We're we're not going to get anywhere with this. I no. guess, but I, it, no, it's no. just such a weird name that even among Skadrian things. I was not expecting a name like that, you know? I was expecting it's another, different. like, metal pump. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's, it's interesting. Uh, the Iron Hearts. Maybe, maybe they just really don't like uh, special relativity or general relativity, and that time isn't flowing at the same rate. It's like, no, we're the time tellers. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> in the, you know, future Earth analog, they started on TikTok, you know, like... <laughs> that's that is that is terrible grace and i'm gonna need you to leave this call right now no that'll change the overlays to keep don't do that uh, <laughs> that's not allowed if schedule is the earth analog then eventually there's gonna be schedule on tiktok it is inevitable mm, that's you that's also true. can leave the call right now it's true yeah, that's true we're gonna skip that era that there, we've never gotten a uh, 2020s era in Brandon's plan, no matter what. Yeah, we'll, we'll go straight from era three, which is like 1980s, to like cyberpunk, which is 2060s, uh, 2070s, Ms. Born 2077, and then and then we'll go to Space Age. You know, where we do need to go, though, uh, is to Utah, Utah. because clearly we uh, get it twice in two books. Uh, twice over two books, right? Yeah. Actually, let me just say, as a, someone who had a discussion about this on the Copper Mind, okay. we do not have a one hundred percent confirmation that this no, is Utol. No, we it just absolutely very don't. strongly implied. Yes, yes. It, yeah. it seems like an, a very reasonable assumption. Yes, it is possible that there is another world with the Shodel ocean world <laughs> well so we don't we don't know that it's an ocean world we know that like nomad drops in the middle of, like f- for all we know it could be 95 percent ground and 
nomad drops in the one island in the one sea that is out there. Like, Brandon's that's like, yeah, I'm gonna troll all those Cosmere nerds <laughs> real good yeah, with yeah. this. It's on the <laughs> land planet, and they don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, a, <laughs> with a little bit of like meta knowledge of hey this is brandon writing these books back to back and they're gonna get published within three months of one another why brandon why would you put you know water and ships and show Dell in two of it, them if this is not the same thing it's it's utile in my opinion i do think we need a little yeah, bit I'm, more confirmation but yeah i, for sure. I do i do think the same yeah, so I have this, like, I, I also think this is Utah, and I think this is an interesting thing if you take into account that Hoyt mentions at the end of Yumi that Utah is kind of a known place, yep. which, like, there are two explanations of this, of this, and one is boring and one is interesting. The boring explanation is that Utah is a known planet across the Cosmere because it's the only place where outside of Yolen, where Shodel live in the physical so, realm. Shodel and Clave. And the more interesting, in my opinion, theory is that because Nomad went to Utol, the Night Brigade followed him to Utol, and something happened between the Shodel and the Night Brigade that really like put this That's place on the map. a big explosive yeah. event that happened. Yeah. <sighs> Some Dragons got involved. They were like, whoa, get off our turf. Um, I mean, it's also possible that, like, other, like, yeah, it could, there are other possible reasons, right? I mean, um, yes, yes. Virtuosity splintered herself on Utah, for example, right? Don't get uh, me excited for a Sigzel book involving Shodel and a massive shade invasion. That sounds incredible <laughs> here. And Dude, Fane, uh, Fane Life versus Shades. That sounds in- amazing. <laughs> Dragons fighting get, spaceships. Do you get Shade Shodel with six arms? You got like more Dude, hands that, to yeah. eye on. What if yeah. what if this is a Dan book? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I I guess this also depends on like where on that like Yumi versus like yeah. the epilogue of Sunlit Man where things come in a timeline. It doesn't feel like a like I don't know, you told us not like like obviously like fane life is cool but you told does not feel like advanced military power capable of going up against the night brigade from what we've seen of them like it is maybe- notable that like the ship that we see in the last illustration is you know like a like wooden ship, ship. Mm. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's very hard to place on the timeline and things and what Hoyd even is meaning about. Oh, yeah, you may have heard of Utah. It's like that was a big thing that happened there. Um, God. Okay. Maybe the Night Brigade just nuked Utah. Maybe maybe this wasn't even a fight. Well, well that would be sad. But like it would be. But. So, so you're thinking that Hoyt is telling the story of Yumi. Sunlit Man occurs after that, uh, when yeah. that happens. Yeah. And then, but Hoyt is telling the story to Yumi after the events of Sunlit Man and whatever horrible thing happened. I mean, on he, he's, not, he's not telling the story to Yumi, so. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um Sure, because I, I think I like th- this is what I heard you say. The events of Secret Project Four Three take place. The events of Secret Project Four take place. Something else happens between the Night Brigade and Nomad on Utah. And then and Hoyt's after telling the story all of that, of Yumi. Hoyt tells these stories. Yeah, mm. or at least you, the Yumi story. The Tress one can be separate. Uh, yeah, like not relevant, but yeah, it probably is right because yeah. the audiences don't see it, they're necessarily the same, yeah, probably not. Yeah, that's that is all that is all possible. Um, I shouldn't get excited for really kick ass stories like that because yeah, I, that's, that's that's I don't even think that's the case. I, I think no. it always is famous for other reasons, yeah, like it, the. Seeing Fane stuff for the first time in a like 
that that that's going to be really cool. And maybe paint Brandon into a corner with Yolan, but you know, so good luck with that, Brandon. Uh, yeah, no, it's a thing. Um, seems like Dan's doing some sort of Cosmere. Uh, he's definitely doing a Cosmere project. And- he did. He did say something like three somethings or something in three parts or whatever. And it's like, get excited for Dragon Steel 24 was in his newsletter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. everyone is already kind of like, man, what a low key Dragon Steel. Yeah. Steel 24. Yeah. Who cares about Stormlight? <laughs> it it, it, Stormlight yeah. 5, that's not a big deal, right? Yeah. I'm going to take two weeks off of work and just like live in Utah for mm-hmm. half a month so I can like survive. Oof. So, one last thing on my list. Uh, although there are a lot of crazy lines that probably we could analyze at some point, is how dead ox at the very end can't talk, doesn't respond to Sigzel anymore, but can still shapeshift, which is extremely weird. I, I mean, presumably whatever was making dead eyes is fixed right uh like whatever problem there was with by demishram or something with the dead eyes they 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 fixed that in in this maybe uh if we think good things happen in stormlight 5 maybe they just identified the problem and then it got worse look you know maybe they figured it out and a bunch of humans died yeah i don't know who knows uh but it is weird to me because I would expect a dead pr- spren to just be like a regular shard blade and not be able to shift shape, ship, shift, shift, shape, shape, shape. God, mm-hmm. why was that so hard to say? Yeah. Is ox in a ship shape? Yes. He, oh, no, he is no. the opposite of ship shape. Let me tell you. <laughs> so I don't know. That, I mean, that's weird to me. Mission. Like, I no, I definitely get that being strange and uh and like i mean part of the argument could be maybe okay well he's not a dead eye like what happened to ox is different than being a dead eye so yeah. he yeah. doesn't behave like a dead eye sure uh i do find it interesting that like what is described as having happened to ox is that the don shark tried to consume him in like a burst of power and in my mind like what seems to have been eaten was primarily like some of his personality and like some of just like the his ability to appear as a spren and like kind of like general character and then ultimately all of its personality is gone but like the bulk of what i would consider to be the power which is like this big old chunk of god metal is still able to be summoned just whenever and that was not burned away at all and that's kind of odd to me yeah, yeah. it may go ahead maybe maybe like the dawn short that Sigzl has is like less about physical and more like about mental state things. Because like we still don't know its intent. So maybe that's why it's like starts with mental stuff. I, I, mean, I, I think it just eats investiture, right? And like Ox was maybe able to like choose which parts of himself to sacrifice first. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that had anything to do with the Doshard. But why wouldn't they choose yeah. the parts where he turns into a shard blade instead of the parts where he's like a thinking feeling? Like they'd say they tried to preserve that part specifically. And yet that what is left is specifically the other part. Yeah. I think this is not a fully formed thought. I'm kind of a stream of a stream of consciousness here. The shard blade is kind of, I think, like the body of the sprint. And Mm -hmm. so we know that is intact. The memories, the mind is still there. So we know that is intact. Are you going where I'm going, Evgeny? I wasn't, but I think I am. The memories in the mind are still there? So like. Oh, I see what you're saying. Before before what happens to him at the end. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so I'm trying to like figure out what it is that the Dawn Shard actually consumed. The and I'm, I'm actually struggling with that a little bit. Well, it's time. kind of like yes. the, he, the, yeah. the monotone now, and yep. he yeah. can't appear as his friend. 
Yes. Yeah, like, uh-huh. what, what does it what does it mean to like lose your like personality or like tone of voice? Like, I don't know. What did you what did you, what did you lose, Ox? And and he like kind of lost his body a little bit. Like he's not like he kind of doesn't he see from like behind sure. Sigzel's eyes a little bit. But he now. Yeah. but he can only like he's centered in Sigzel, which is why he calls him the valet, right? Like yeah. he can't, or, or, yeah. can't yeah. move yeah. himself. Squire. Yeah, yeah. And like he perceives the world through his senses, but clearly he can manifest. Yeah, yeah. Un- unless I don't think that's the case, but like unless he is not manifesting himself, he's like pulling from Sigil's own investiture. No, no, no. That's not what's happening. No way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that 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 can't be what's happening. Yeah. Right. Like he he we know he's using a little bit to manifest. But yeah, that yeah, is yeah, right. to like initiate the trans the, the manifestation, not yes. actually manifesting his investiture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is that first burning away is weird. Uh the second mm-hmm. one though reminded is me, also weird. Uh, reminded me of preservation and the well of ascension. Oh, okay. There, there's away. still the mists, the body of the thing, but the mind has been expended. And so there's just like this echo of the mind. And uh, now that, that cognitive aspect is just all burned away. I don't understand why the other parts would still he like the body would part would still be there. I don't understand, but maybe that's just not a thing, Ox has the capability of giving i mean i, I guess that's the, the similar thing with like any shard right uh devotion and dominion the vessels are dead the mines are gone but the power is still there uh i, I guess honor, yeah vessels gone power still there it i suppose it is- mechanically it's just interesting if ox is like hey i can give you a bit of juice at the end to give you powers again Oh yeah, like plot wise, it, it works great. No, it's just like uh, yeah. But just I, I oh, I guess I'm like. Apparently, Ogs can't use that part of himself that would turn into a blade. Like that's just not yeah. possible for him to do. And the only thing yeah. he can use is like that cognitive part of him. Well, I, I guess think, I, I guess. think that's an intentional decision on his part. I think he wants to leave sigzil with something usable and so he chooses to sacrifice his mind instead of sacrificing his body so to speak potentially sure yeah i I, I think something very similar to that is in the well i mean he doesn't say that he chooses that but he says hey i'll be gone but you'll still be able to summon me as a blade yeah but i i that may not be a thing that Ox is choosing that could just be how it works. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. Uh, but that is one way I choose to interpret that. Yeah. Man, that's weird. That's weird. But yeah, it doesn't quite. It doesn't quite square for me. But but like maybe we'll just see. as a being made of investiture, you just can't like expend that investiture that you are. I, I, but then I he does he like he does like he does it even more like in my mind it seems like it would be so much simpler to use up the energy that makes up your body yeah. than to use the energy that makes up your own mind you know yeah i mean you're not wrong for sure there right i i think that's just his choice yeah that that that's 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 certainly an explanation for sure um yeah, it's weird. And like Spren death, is, this no. is the weirdest Spren death that we have, I think. Mm. Well, but- it's also a little strange too that like maybe it's like he's burning him, but that like he's able to like give Sigzel like surges by consuming his own essence. Like that's normal. That's not normally how that works. Uh, yeah, the whole thing with but- like I never betrayed my oaths it does not make sense. To me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, did yeah. we ever discuss I never betrayed no. my oath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually think that's kind of interesting because, like, com- compare it to, like, Maya, like, we chose. It sounds like, I always think that one of the, like, obviously there might be some weirdness with Bogdimitra, but, like, 
one of the differences between the recreants and other times that bonds have been broken is that the spren broke their oaths, which like hmm. I like and I, I think it's possible that maybe that had never happened before the recreants because spren like don't really like they need the bond to change at all. And like I don't like I think just a spren fundamentally would not be a being that could easily break those kind of oaths unless something drastic happened that they um uh, like yeah, I don't know. I, I guess right. in my mind, the weird part is Spren swearing oaths at all. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I like. But I, I mean, my... we've always known that like the Naho bond is like like we've had lobs about people asking like, "Oh, can you force Spren into a bond?" And Brandon saying like, "No, it's like a two way street." But I think no, that's not that, swearing an oath. Yeah, I, I think what that means is that the knight offers a bond or an oath. And the spren accepts that. Like I, I think that's what that uh, the two way street means. But but the spren doesn't yeah. accept the oath. But the but the spren the, the the bond wouldn't initiate if the spren was not choosing the person. That, like that's, that's, that's what true for sure. That's yes. what's going on yes. here. It's I, that's that's the two way street. If the two of them decide to stop working together, if they cannot agree, like we see yes. with Kaladin and Sil, they will yes. come apart. Yeah, I feel like I. The whole like oaths thing, like if this if Spren swearing oaths was a standard part of like bonding, bonding a radiant, then I think we would have seen this in Stormlight between all the people who have been becoming radiant in those books, and like we never, if Brandon like suddenly declares in Stormlight Five that like Sil swore oaths to Kaladin, and we just you know, we just didn't notice, then I, I'm going to call foul no. because, like, no. this was never established. Yeah, that's not happening. So what I, I think, like, I think that whatever happened between Sigzil and Oaks was unusual in some way. Because, like, we, we already know that the two of them met in Shadesmar. Mm -hmm. So I think they, like, I don't know, maybe, like, they swore oaths to each other in Shadesmar as some sort of i mean i'm making this the swore oaths like, to each other i'm making this sound like a marriage but i don't think that's what happens <laughs> i mean yeah it's kind, it sort of, of is it kind of it kind of is kind what of is, is what is being a skybreaker if not being a partner to someone don't think about it too hard um <laughs> it is very weird though i am the thing that throws me off is that I, I guess it doesn't it doesn't it's it's not necessarily something that throws me off, but it's like I don't know if I trust Ox when he says I also swore oaths and and so here's power. Mm. Cause like the entire book Ox has been going on about being being the knight and Sigzil is his squire. And like, this is just not factual. <laughs> Nomad at one point does say, oh yeah, he likes to say that because he doesn't have a body and he just, he rides in my mind. And so I don't know if I would take what Ox says as literal truth. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. It's possible it's not, but I mean, like you can also like I could see, as I said before, it's possible that the Spren, in a non mechanically important way, did make their own oaths at this point. You know, maybe Ox swore some oaths. We don't we don't know that that's not like the maybe, case. Maybe uh, like their oath is the thing that helped initiate that connection in the first place to like their person, right? As they're like transitioning, <laughs> like that's the thing that helps them transition or something. I don't know. Oh, yes. that doesn't I'm thinking more just like Ox said, like, I, you know what? I, I swear I'll take you as my radiant. I will protect yeah, yeah. you. I'm your yeah. friend, you know? Like, yeah. that's just something that they could have said at some point. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. and so that, like, because uh, in my mind, what Singsel is doing there is not particularly skybreakery either. Like, it's not like there's like a law thing going on aside from maybe like, un like, war crimes, I guess. <laughs> But, his entire like, character arc is Winger under him. This, this well, oh, it is, which makes the Skybreaker introduction baffling thematically. Yes. But yeah, whatever. Uh, huh? That's just me. Yes. No, I agree. 
I I try I am trying to tie this back to the idea of oaths having power, like the power to push back the Don yeah. Shard's influence, for example. And Ox going, hey, I never for so for for sooth for forsaken my oaths. Sure. Um and so here here's a bunch of power, right? I still have access to the surges. I don't know how that makes sense. I think there is something here. I think there is a connection to be made, but I haven't been able to make it. Personally, I would say <laughs> maybe Ox is Ox is bonded to Sigzel's old friend. To Ox is old friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I oh, personally, personally true don't love think that, triangle. Uh, that, triangle. <laughs> I personally don't think that that Ox saying I, you know, I kept my oath or whatever has anything to do with them being able to provide Sigzel power. I think those are just Ox saying something and Ox doing something. I don't think that that is what lets them do what they do. That to me seems like it's just like a I, little thing Sigzel for Don Shard. With I think whether or not Ox swore actual verbal oaths, I think there is a mechanical difference between the spren going the fundamental things that we agree to that make like the fun i think there's a mechanical thing that happens when the spren go know this fundamental thing that like makes the radiance is wrong like that happened with the recreants versus not doing that with, with ox like i'm not quite following like i i think that like we see like i think there is a mechanical whether or not the spread like verbally swear oaths, I do think there is a mechanical effect of the spren like actively being complicit in the breaking of the oaths slash like the bond sort of thing, right? One side break versus both break up. Yeah, sure, sure. Like, uh like they can they don't necessarily have to swear oaths to be like complicit in that sort of like i don't know mm. i see in my mind that that's not really like that seems like something that would have happened before that at times in the past before the recurrence there would have been times that the spren also chose to break the oath with the radiant because there were no consequence to it they were like this isn't a good fit like we hear about some of those in the epigraphs like that light weaver that couldn't figure out his oaths. i just assume there were times that would have happened prior to the record yeah I think Badamishram did have like a, a specific effect there, but yeah. I, Grace, what you're just saying reminded me of Kaladin and Syl in Words of Radiance, where it, Kaladin's like, I thought you were dead. And Syl's just like, just as dead as your oaths. And like, maybe that would be different if like Syl felt differently about Kaladin. Maybe. I, I don't know. Which is, I think. It's weird. So the thing that I'm getting hung up on is in the climax, uh, or I guess not the climax, but like in the uh, cool Zellian scene, yes. he gets not just investiture back, he gets gravitation back. And that to me feels different from all the Don Shard is just consuming investiture to like, like power him or fortify him or whatever. Like he gets surge binding. Yeah, I think that was is that, a Og specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a glyph in the picture? I never actually bothered to look. Was that the Windrunner or the Skybreaker? Skybreaker. 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 Bafflingly. Yeah. <laughs> It's 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 yeah. very cool. And, and so, like, I don't. It doesn't make sense to me that Ox just going, "Hey, eat me for power," will result in gravitation. No, I think it's Ox. Like, it's not quite. It's not quite like that. Ox is doing something there like yes that that expenditure like zellian's not just eating ox right that's not what's happening there yes i agree i just don't understand what it is that he's doing it's magic 
<laughs> okay, all right, good talk. Good talk. Yes, one that's shot cast awesome. magic. He can he can grant that power. He's granting that power. You know, like that's what yeah, he's doing. Like, it's like, just, yeah. I I think that there's like enough of a thing where I you can like make a facsimile of the Nahel bond that and like making that surge binding be possible maybe like granting that ability once more because like the spread well, grant the person the ability that's that's how it works yeah that's yeah. true well i mean it's not even clear to me that i guess i don't, I don't know what sort of connection uh sigzel and ox have after ox was both eaten and sigzel walked away from his oath so uh I mean, look, the the oath oath yeah. pack's broken, but there's still a little bit of connection there, right? There's like it's probably not as bad. It's probably not it's always worse a than that. Connection. Yeah. I I think there is more that's going on here. I I don't know if we can solve that after being on a call for seven hours, but I oh, think there's more. No, that's I going think if we're here. here for three more hours, we'll get it. No, we're not doing that. Yeah. We're not okay. doing that. Well, in that you case, we get some more water. <laughs> if you are going to keep me here for three more hours, I will try <laughs> fly to California. It's like specifically I'm to beat you up. leaving. <laughs> I'm burning this place to the ground. Actually, there, there are Twitch streams of people that are just sleeping. So welcome to that. <laughs> I that's, am not giving the people my sleeping live stream. <laughs> that's just the next Shardcast episode, actually, yeah. guys. No, just kidding. That, that's um, going to be our April Fool's episode. Just the entire so Shardcast sleeping. <laughs> that's not creepy at all. Um, <laughs> Look, if, if it's good enough for the Azish Emperor, it's good enough for us. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do agree, Evgeny. Like, it is a little weird how he's doing that, but for, like, it's one of those things that even though I don't understand exactly how it's working, I agree that it makes sense that the, it, he can do it. I yeah, like I can I can buy that this is like if I don't squint at it too hard, I'm like, oh yeah, this this has the right shape of a Cosmere magic. Yeah, like oh yeah, oats and one radiant and night and stuff. But like the radiant has the cracks, and then the <laughs> the the spread fills the cracks. Yeah, no, radiant uh, famously have in cracks. The souls. And yeah. and so like maybe what Oggs is doing is just like taking himself, and then shoving that in the cracks in, in Sigzel's in souls. Cracks. Yes. And that is providing that bond, but because he's dead, then it's it's going to fade away. Maybe. And partially in my mind, I kind of think about like Ox is like a, like if you like burned out an engine, you know, like he doesn't do much anymore. And he's like, he can give you one last jolt of power, but that's going to be all it's got left in him. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, then it's just, yeah. it's all going to fall apart after that. Yeah, so yeah. he, that's how I've thought about it a little more. Yeah. Like, is, uh, but that's just me. That, that is certainly the, that feels surface level to me. And that works for the purposes of the book. But I want to understand the more like mechanical understanding of like what does it mean for like him to like give that one last jolt or burst of power? I, like yeah. what does it mean in the context of a Nahel bond and a transference of invest? Like that's what I want to understand. And like sure. I am okay sure. giving up on that for the purposes of this episode. But that's not something that I have an answer to at the moment, and we'll probably just like continue that, thinking it about. It feels and like leave a, us a comment. I think that's a thing where Brandon could like talk for a giant paragraph in two minutes in a stream of like, okay, well, here's some mechanics things. It's like this, this, this happens, and that's what happened. Yeah. So yeah. let's all ask him about that. <laughs> well, and it, and in my opinion, this is one of those things where Brandon writes out a whole paragraph because that's what it took to justify this kind of a corner case for narrative convenience a little bit, you know, which is kind of what it really comes down to in the Cosmere a lot. Like, yes. this is how he wants it to work. Ox needs to sacrifice, sacrifice okay. himself like this. And so I'm sure Brandon might have some idea. Yes. But it yes. works this way because... I acknowledge 
that this is absolutely the case sometimes, that doesn't feel the case to me in this instance. Like, oh. it feels to me like there is an underlying reason here that is not just Brandon thought this was cool and I'm just, I haven't been able to get to that reason. Like, sure. There, there are cases where what you were saying, I feel the same way. And like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's just, you know, hey, the Uto, the, not the Uto, but like the canticle system with the weird conduit. That's here for, to make the wacky story that Brandon yeah. wanted to write, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why Aiden and Alcia made it that way. I can accept that. It works because Brandon wants it to work. There's probably, you know, if we dig into it enough, we can probably find some things. This doesn't feel that way to me. I, mm. I think that's fair. Uh, that. I mean, I think it's a thing that as a writer probably happens simultaneously. It's like, this is cool. Oh, that makes a lot of sense for X, Y, and Z reason. Cool. Uh, but that's that's me from a bit of a writer perspective when I can marry. It's like, ah, that's both very cool narratively and fits with the, the greater Cosmere stuff. Like, I, I, I think guess. that's plausible. I, um, I just think it, Brandon's mechanics are at his best when they flow very naturally and you can see exactly how the concepts are applied. And this is not one of those cases. Yeah, so that's this to me like you didn't have, but I, I, I mean, I don't think this is like, this is such an edge case. Like this is impossible without the Dawn chart. Yeah. Right? Like, I, like, I don't think still could sacrifice herself to give Khaled in a burst of strength. I, I mean, isn't that what happened when she I falls when he falls down the chasm in the bridge? Yeah, in oh, Wars of Radiance, kind of is, isn't it? Uh, could That's be, like, I guess. For, she screams yeah. out, and then he like, and oh, then yeah. she's gone for a while. Oh, I think she that's like, a good point. Actually, I think it, she gives him the ability to draw Stormlight, which is a little different than like giving him the ability to like crap. But yeah, you know, there, there's 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 a, there's a relationship there, though. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we want to go who's that cosmic character, guys? Let's, let's, yeah. let's get yeah, out of here. I, well, let's, let's, let's do a quick, like, hey, things that we wanted to mention, like, brief mentions of things. Okay, like not, real brief. I have, I have none. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, how does, about, does, does anyone else have anything? Yeah, how about I no, just, not, like, like just... pose final thoughts? Uh, and Yeah, yeah, final yeah, thoughts. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we've been on here forever. Any final thoughts, anyone? anything uh, like there, there, there's so much that we can talk about but i hopefully you out of these two episodes you got most of what you wanted to talk about <laughs> so night brigade okay night brigade go ahead rasar night brigade is cool i want their book that that's all <laughs> intense agreement that's yeah that is not a unique sentiment. I need in the it fandom. yesterday, but now with this book, I'm like, Brandon, you better write that book. <laughs> I'm gonna be furious if that is not written. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Trinity is cool. Trinity's awesome. Um, and apparently, they're a threat to like the Irie and the Scadrian Subabstro. I where mean, they have, like look, the evil sounds like a enemy of everyone. Really, thinking about it. Yeah, I guess I guess it's like big evil spread that are like you know spreading across the Cosmere. Yeah. You're probably concerned about that. Yeah, probably. Any um, other thoughts? I have two. Okay. That are both. What the hell's going on here? Uh-huh. Uh huh. One of them is, hey, how did the Night Brigade catch up to Nomad within like a day after he skipped to Canticle? That seems if if that is the cadence at like which he, he has to like if does he have to acquire half of a god king every day to stay away of the night? No wonder That's he's insane. so tired. He's tired. That is insane. When does this man sleep? Badly. I don't know. It's a little weird. He does at one point like kind of hope that maybe he'll because he jumps so far. He's like, maybe it'll take a while for them to find me. And yeah. then like it doesn't. But yeah, like how did it like? Yeah. So so that is I want to know I about know. that. I want to understand that. That seems weird to but me, especially without supposedly the special spike that it's using. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I assume they have had one of those and that's what they've been doing to find him. Because how else yeah, do you I, find I somebody who true. teleports yeah. randomly unless you've got the Mandalorian device that just follows people. <laughs> For no reason. 
I don't yeah. I don't understand how any of that works. Yeah. And the other one is, hey, Sigzo, how the hell do you have a plate that is of two sprint types? But you don't have your original blade, but you have your original plate, but the original plate is mixed with your new plate, but you abandoned your, both sets of your oats, but now you still have that plate. And it's like, when it comes back, both of them come back. Like, what is going on? Uh, Maybe this is Ox's plate. Sure. Because <laughs> cause Ox bonded the original uh, she is, wind uh, the, 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 honor's yeah, yeah, yeah. friend. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe that maybe you know that honor spren was pulled into the physical realm by Ishar with the experiments and, and, and then Ogs and bonded and that and became a plate without That's ever okay. meeting that spren because he did say he never met Singsoul's original friend. Oh, so yeah, they bonded okay, without meeting okay that's that's a very good point okay <laughs> yeah. my crack theories that don't work uh in fact do not work um cool grace anything uh, Hoyt sucks and Sigzel should give him to the Night Brigade. <laughs> I mean, Hoyt is very sorry. Hoyt, I'm sorry, Sigzel. Hoyt, almost Hoyt, certainly do Hoyt better. Hoyt is not worth this. Uh, Hoyt is absolutely not worth this. Like, if he is good enough for Yasna, he's good enough for me. I, you, gotta, you gotta keep the Dawn Shard safe. You gotta do it. I do want another, like, Sigzel Hoyt confrontation, uh, and like in Space Age, because. I feel like Zellian's important in the Cosmere and we're going to yeah. see that eventually, right? And that's going to be really cool. Maybe he and Kelsey will be tight. And I'll be like, they'll be like, this guy that sucks. That would actually be very funny. But He's united against maybe, Hoyd. Hey, maybe this is how Ze Zellion can finally stop running from the Night Brigade. He just throws his lot in with the Ghost Bloods and like gets a protection gang. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but here's the thing. The Ghostbloods do say that there are forces in the Cosmere that can obliterate them yeah. without, you know, batting us like... Maybe they're better now, but like, yeah, yeah during like... Era 2, I think Night Brigade is maybe one of them. What else could yeah. it be? I mean, maybe they like got better over centuries. I, it, it's impossible for them to get we better. Worse, hope I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We hope you enjoyed this, this, th these massive episodes. They, they were not short as I had hoped, but that's not surprising. Let's head on over to Who's That Cosmere Character? Ah! This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. It's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Call. I don't know why it's I did Zillion. a Howard Dean scream, but you know, okay. <laughs> okay. Your political career is over, Eric. <laughs> yeah, that that was the thing that ruined a politician's career in 2004. Now it's just, oh, you know. All right. Um, I need a prison. <laughs> Maybe. All right, listeners, you know how the game is played. You've sent an email to WTCC at 17star.com with five clues in the character they correspond to. I read each clue aloud, and after each one, our panelists have a chance to guess who's that Cosmere character. Ready? That's it. Yes. This one Four was five. sent in by Ax on the Discord. Oh, oh yeah. Um, okay. Hi, Ax. Clue Wait, one. Axe or Ox? I, I don't know. It's the A A K S. I recognize yeah, yeah. the name. I don't know. How uh, that like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Ox the spread. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Clue one. This character has notable eyes. Uh, red and the heterochromatic guy. Not that's Redding. his name, right? Yes, wow, it's it is not Redding. his name. Damn. Okay. Uh, notable eyes. <laughs> Any shade. <laughs> I'm going to go with Kaladin. It is not Kaladin. Uh, Dunny. It's not Dunny. I like that one. Uh, let's go with uh, Elokar because his eye color changed like three times. <laughs> It is not Elokar. It's <laughs> only once. It went oh, from two. yellow to it changed blue. twice. They were ended in blue and yellow. Cool. Blue that's, two. that's one change. This and character is an oh, this character is an accomplished healer. <sighs> is it the apothecary who looked really old and his eyes are all wrinkly? Well, with no name that they call a Ratsfriend and the Way of Kings. We don't it is not that person. Okay. I don't think we know anything about his eyes. 
Well, maybe he's a, it's maybe like really old. I can't remember. He's old. Maybe his eyes are like <laughs> maybe they're all wrinkled. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Renarin. I'm trying to get through this. It is not Renarin. Um, healer, accomplished healer. Yeah. Ah, uh, the stump. It is not the stump. Go through every truth watcher. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing there's so few of them. Uh, who is All accomplished? Three. There's nothing notable about Lyran's eyes. I mean, I'm not vibing with this, but I'm going to go with Kaladin. <laughs> I, I already guessed. did that last, already guessed. last that, question. That's probably why I'm not vibing with it. <laughs> well, <laughs> not Kaladin. <laughs> not Kaladin. Oh, well, <laughs> What if it's Kaladin? <laughs> I think we well, uh, should consider it. Yeah. We'll try this again next clue. Three, three. This character has interactions with Hoid. Interactions with Hoid. So who's guessing Kaladin this time? <sighs> well, we, we already went, so it's got to be someone else. I was going to guess Lyran, honestly, because he has glasses. So that is something up with his eyes. That's slightly notable. I, I but feel like I don't a, think he interacts with Kaladin. Well, I, I did not make the clues, so I cannot speak to their you know perspective. But I I'm sorry, did like you say was... you don't think Lyran interacts with Kaladin? With Hoyt. <laughs> I, I'm tired. It has been seven hours. <laughs> I we need to get through this. Is, I think that a pedantic person could make an argument that any Rosharan who lives in the caste system has notable eyes in that it determines their social hierarchy. Yeah. And I was also thinking from like a world hopper's perspective, right? Uh, so like if you are a Skadrian coming to Roshar, your eyes are notable. I guess I can't. But think I of you know what? This good healer who's an. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on, out on a limb and say Susa Bron. But it's not Susa Bron. He's got a little tongue. <laughs> hey. Oh, you're not going for that. Okay, never mind. Ah. Wayne. It's so Wayne. <laughs> I'm going um, at a different tactic with healing, okay? <laughs> I see we're going... Okay, so... <laughs> how do I go more insane than Wayne? Oh, I know. I will go for uh, Edgley. It's not Edgley. Did you guess, David? No, I'm going to guess the Lord Ruler. It's not the Lord Ruler. No, self-healing is healing. Yeah, yeah that's the whole point with Wayne's yeah. guess. <laughs> this character has significantly changed their appearance. <sighs> And it's not the Lord Ruler. Vasher. It is not Vasher. Not a book healer. Accomplish here in the uh, the, the one return that's like well known for like Mercy Star? It is not Mercy Star. Is everybody blind and then they regain their sight? That'd be notable eyes. Notable. Notable healer. Change Accomplished their- healer. Accomplished healer. God. That'd be an accomplished healer. If you can heal your eyes, accomplished as hell. What does that even mean? How is it not uh, Revan? Well, he's not a healer. With the eyes, yeah. though. No, we, yeah, yeah, there are he's other one, he's one char- we're working okay. with. He's one character. He has the most notable eyes. He has the most notable eyes. I'm trying to think about Radiant. Or what about uh, Accomplished healer, notable. Session I a healer. Uh, what was the last clue? Uh, let's see. I'll just read them all out. Uh, notable eyes, accomplished healer, interactions with Hoid, substantial, uh, substantially changed their appearance. Okay, I'm okay. gonna ignore clue number three. Great. And guess Marsh. It's not Marsh. It, did I guess, guess on this clue, Grace? Oh, you did. You guessed. Uh, I something dumb. I, probably. I, th- I think you guessed something <laughs> dumb. Okay, I, great. You, cool. That was the Wayne guess, wasn't it? No, Wayne no, was the last was round. Clue. I'm pretty sure you did. Um, okay, that's fine. I'm going to guess Benley. It's not Benley. Clue five. Uh, this character refers to their father. Okay. I don't Just know. Just refers if, to. What? I don't know if this fits with all the clues. But this is the guess I've come up with, and it's Yim, okay? It's not Yim. Okay, 
Well, does that, does that, he does just just refresh. He heals. He heals. He's a notable healer. Look, I, I have something that's a healer. No, I, who's accomplished. I, I, okay. I, I, that som- sometimes you get to a point in in who's that Kazumi character where it's like, I will go for someone who meets a clue. Maybe maybe he I, he could have interacted with Hoyt and vaguely alluded to his father making shoes or some crap like that's yeah, possible. Uh, okay. Um. First to their father. It's probably like an Elantrian who talks to Beggar Hoyt and was a doctor. You know, like. <laughs> I, I did okay. admittedly choose this one and thought, well, we want to finish and wrap this up quickly. I don't think it'll take the long time. Oh, you think that's an wow. easy one? Wow. wow. Is, there anything, is there anything wrong with the Lord Beggar's eyes? I don't know if it's Hoyt. Yeah, no, that's a, that seems totally think. wrong. I'm thinking like White Sand now. I'm like. <laughs> Does somebody have weird eyes? I feel like somebody, somebody might have an eye thing going on. What about Spook? Spook's got weird eyes. Spook. Notable, yeah. Is that your guess, David? Yeah, it's Spook. It's not Spook. Yeah. Uh, Sill. It is not Sill. Just Allah. You're the only one. Uh, the I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, no. I can't You're going to get it. Here. That's like what's throwing me off. You're going to get it. I, I am absolutely not going to <laughs> get it. <laughs> I believe. I wanna. Stop. I wanna. S- <laughs> you should stop. You will be disappointed. Uh, refers, okay, so refers to father, changes drastically appearance. To father. Weird eyes. So weird. Yeah, that's a notable good, eyes. Notable eyes. Healer. I, I already said healer. What was else? What else? Uh, was interacts there? with Hoyd. Right, interactive hide. Is there anyone with more than two eyes? <laughs> what about what about the sleepless? Is it Chet? <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Yes, Chet, the noted cosmic character. Side of versus cosmic. You know what? I'm gonna go with Ark. No, no, I'm not gonna go with. No, no, no. I this this offends me on a personal level. This possibility, <laughs> possible guess of mine. Um, you don't want Arklo? No, no. What about Yalmizen or Nikliasorm? Nikliasorm, <laughs> Arklo Madarian. That was Arklo. You know what? I'm gonna go with Lirin because none of us have guessed Lirin yet. Like we it just is, poked around that. It is not Lirin. Okay, it is Ula with a Kintra medic from Tress. <sighs> oh, his oh. eyes are red. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And he also has like it's a healer eyes. He notably, in inter- definitely interacted with Hoyd. And oh, yeah. and the father. Okay, yeah. All right, sure. Okay. What was the father yeah. thing? That oh, was... he talked about his father. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, well, good good get. That was great. That, I forgot that, the trust that, was an option. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 did I, this. did kind of, I did kind of think that you guys probably forgot trust was an option. But <laughs> I, I was like, do correct. I next them on that? Or I did. did so I did explicitly think about trust. And I was like, well, Charlie makes a reference to his father, but like all the other clues don't fit. And then <laughs> just went back to somewhere else. It, it's. <laughs> Look, I'm just glad I'm not upset. I'm like, oh, okay. That's nice. I like no, when that's that valid. Yeah. 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 I'm dreadfully disappointed in myself. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to do a Who's That Cosmic Character Priority Q. You can support our Patreon for $10 a month and submit Who's That Cosmic Character Priority Qs that we will read sooner, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I know we're really selling it. Uh, this one is sent by Oliver Newcomb, a long time commenter and it's patron true. It's uh, true. and clue one this character has one surviving child Darina, no uh, Gavilar <laughs> spoilers for Starlight 5 actually <laughs> at one uh, point in their lives yeah <laughs> it is not Gavilar Elokar, you said, Grace? Elokar? It no. is not Elokar. I'm going to guess Straff. <sighs> it is not Straff. For Straff. a period of time. I don't... Very brief, but mm. it, but it happens. I think it has to be someone with multiple children, only one of which has survived. 
See, I Jeez. so I interpreted that as like, sur- like a child who survived them. When I don't know, maybe that's I'm too t- like you know, it's like they like oh like if someone dies, they like did one like surviving child. Like oh, that's why I guess Ellen like, Yeah, guy. one child mm. who survived them. You know who I'm gonna guess? Yeah. Oh, Not yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Tanavest. It's not Tanavest, like son, Kaladin. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, my real dad, Lyran. All right. My real dad. <laughs> Clue two. This character survived the ever storm hitting their residence. That got rid of my guess. One one like- this character has one surviving child. <sighs> oh. Is it like That's a Hearthstone citizen? Singers. Oh, you think those? I, I would say that, this that is, is this is not just a character b- mentioned once. Okay. Okay, okay cool. Um, like, this, this, this is, I, I don't... Patrons, I usually like try not to pick ones that are like super esoteric. Well, I mean, there, there are a few ones that are actually pretty good that are esoteric, but I'm not picking one when we're this tired. That's so weird. No. Much Plus, crazy. our our patrons tend to be both more intelligent and more handsome than that's science. Other. That's science yeah. for sure. And, and it, there's there's a correlation with how much you donate on Patreon and how attractive and how many uh, people true. you do date. That's a fact. That's research yeah. is ongoing, but research is ongoing. Seems good. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess. Uh. Asudon. It is Asudon, Grace. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was like, oh man, you guessed Elokar. I was like, I, oh man. Genuinely, I the only reason I guessed uh, Asudon was because I couldn't remember Redley and Eshen I's mother's name. <laughs> well, I think Jack it's Jack Slim. Slim. Jack Slim. <laughs> like how <laughs> Jack Slim. Uh very good. Uh clue three, this the character's spouse is deceased. Still, still on board with for, for Jack Slim. <laughs> yes, and presumably clue four. This character yeah. was involved in the government. True, mm-hmm. and she was keeper song. If you're a queen, you're in the government. No, 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 no sorry, I'm, I'm still, I'm still thinking about whether whether Jack Slim fits. Oh, okay, keeper <laughs> song. <laughs> and clue five. This character died during an invasion of his or her oh, okay. home. That's less true. Yeah. <laughs> It is so far. <laughs> what? Very good. Jackson can die in like five. Very good. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed these episodes. Uh, I think we ran out of some laughs in this one as we're like, oh, okay, we gotta, we gotta. Well, get we have, this. we have almost spent a work day on this call. We we so, have, but we got a whole month yeah, done. We're done. We don't have to do true, any true. more recording all November. <laughs> Except to find <laughs> like that's good. Uh, so you can find us on 17char.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. Join our Discord and talk about all sorts of Sunlit Man stuff. And uh, I, I love the duck. I did notice it a while ago. I just haven't had a chance to mention it, Ala. But I, I did not. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, you can support our Patreon for as little as a dollar. And... Uh, you can vote on art polls and see some fun outtakes. Uh, I will. I will say the the last two Wob episodes had some very funny outtakes. So you know, I I, I think it's worth a dollar. I I do. If if you're cool with that, you can find us on all the uh, social media sites and stuff. Well, okay, not all of them. Actually, we don't but... we don't post on Blue Sky or Threads at the moment, but we might. We have an we account. Have we could if we wanted yeah, we, you can you can follow us if we ever you know decide that instagram and twitter have just i'm sorry instagram and x, oh, x. I have so you said for, formerly known as twitter the platform for formerly known as twitter <laughs> yeah, what was yeah. That? yeah uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, so links not in the description for Blue Sky and uh, no, threads, but search but for something Shard, they were there. It, sure. Uh, and anyway, our next episode will be Defiant Reactions, actually, Ooh. and Dragonsteel will have occurred by then. Ah. So that is when. When is this cool. coming out? Is this coming out during like the twentieth? 
Oh, it's literally coming out the day before Dragon Steel comes out. It's okay. that Sunday. Yeah, so for sure. if you are listening to this when it comes out or watching this when it comes out and you are going to Dragon Steel, you may be able to find some of us on That's the true. convention floor. That's true. Uh, I, tell, us, uh, tell us how much you love us. I will yeah, mostly can... be hanging out at our shard booth and hanging out with you guys because I have basically no plans, which is great. <laughs> Tell Eric your opinions on all the theories that he definitely doesn't remember by now. That's true. I the the things I say, uh, it's like reading a YouTube comment where someone's like, "I really agree with this idea." I'm like, I don't remember what I said, especially if it's like a podcast from a year ago. No clue. Yeah. Anyway, uh, come see us at Dragon Steel. Uh, oh, we do have pins. We do. If you're at Dragon Steel, we have pins, including Copper Mind and our Cannon pins. Sick. Oh, and stickers. So we, we 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 bought we bought some, and maybe sometime we'll be able to sell it for people on the internet. But thus far, maybe. they're yeah. in person. Okay, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.